Hello, hello, everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? Oh, if you're new here, my name is Laney Shaughnessy. I'll be your host for the evening. Thanks for joining me on this wonderful night. And I uh, already see some of my valued members jumping in uh, the from the uh, paid memberships. Welcome, Roger S., Dave Krause, Chad Jones, Roger Brown. How you doing? Hey, Troy Pritchard. How are you doing? Brooks Martin, how's it going with you? Thanks for popping in there, Sylvia Klosterman. How you doing, Sylvia? So, tonight we are going to, uh, the. I don't know if you saw the thumbnail. The image in the thumbnail is one of many different designs that we're going to do. But, you know, for the holidays uh, and for all different types of party occasions or just, heck, in general, just on the go or whatever, there's all kinds of cool different designs uh, that you can do with bottle openers uh, and, and bottle opener inserts and kits and things like that. And um, the uh, what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to uh, kind of create a little bit of a beginner class, if you will, but a little bit advanced too, uh, kind of intermediate advanced, uh, to where it was a fun, simple project or projects. Um, the uh, they would be great sellers if you were selling they would be great gifts if you're looking for stocking stuffers for the holiday or um, if you're just looking for something to you know hand out to people or sell at craft shows um, uh, and hell they're just they're 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 fun to break out at parties and stuff and and uh, you know or man caves or she sheds or all these different kinds of places right so uh, we're going to have a lot of different designs and layouts and everything. And um, I've got all the kind of information of like where you can get your inserts and things like that. I think, let me make sure everything is pulled up. Let me get everything pulled up. Open. Get everything pulled up for you so I don't have to um, try to describe it and not be able to for you. All right, so there's one. There's, so how are y'all doing? Talks to amongst yourself. We're gonna be starting in just a moment. Uh, the official start is at 7.15. Let me just get these pages on the other screen popped up so we can, I can drag them over when they're needed. Doug Fushi, how you doing, bud? Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Um, copy. beans all right so for those of you uh, before we kind of get the ball rolling and everything uh, if you look in the chat you'll see uh, these members pop up with a little blue icon next to their name uh, they are uh, participating in the paid memberships uh, the exclusive memberships where they get access to behind the scenes stuff we have a private group on Facebook where we can share information and things and uh, they get uh, uh, we um, uh, they get all kinds of benefits and perks and everything that aren't available to the public. But um, we, uh, if you're interested in that, uh, check out the information uh, at the on the home page of the website. There's a join button. Click on there. There's a short little video that will kind of tell you about it and all the perks and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, we'd love to see more of you join. I think we are about uh, 30 members strong and growing every day. And uh, it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing when it, when everything gets rolling and stuff. Our first official live members only event is tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. So, Doug, Roger, Chad, and um, Roger Brown and Roger S. I keep forgetting. There's two of you, Rogers. Quite a few Rogers. Dave Krause. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in that class tomorrow. All right. So let's jump over to my computer screen. I am on screen number two over there and let's put me down in the bottom left corner 
Where's my little bottom left corner button? Right there. Awesome blossom. Okay, we are starting out for those of you that are just getting started in Vetric and not sure what you're looking at on the screen here. Uh, when we come into a project and create a new project, we come to our job setup. And in the job setup is where we tell the job whether it's a single sided job, a two sided job, uh, if it is a, a rotary job, if it was a fourth axis type of thing, the size of our material and where we're starting from. This particular project is going to be a two sided job. Uh, and we are going to, I'm just going to start off with a, a larger board to make the different parts in and everything, uh, but we're gonna start off with a 16 inch long uh, one by 12, 11 and a quarter inches wide, three quarter inches thick, and I'm gonna be touching off on the material surface for both sides. I'll start in the bottom left corner, and I like flipping my boards along my Y axis, so that's where we're gonna start there. We'll flip along the Y. Big Daddy Fish, thanks for popping in, bud. How you doing? Um, and uh, we are, and Kevin Wilkerson, saw you there too. Um, we're going to, I'm going to flip along the Y and that's going to be our job setup here. So this white screen, white box you're looking at on the screen is here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you some, uh, some inkling for those of you that are visual goers and all, uh, I'm going to give you some, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see here. Let me give you a uh, an inkling here. Wood opener. Got two keyboards and all that wonderful stuff. All right. So if you were to look on the World Wide Web for bottle openers, you would think, "Whoo, it's a saturated market, right?" No, not really. Uh, but there's a lot of different cool ideas. There's round bottle openers. There's bottle openers with different shapes. There's wall hanging bottle openers. There's Thor hammer bottle openers. There's all kinds of cool stuff uh, and, and things that are um, uh, that you can do with bottle openers and everything. We're going to work on a few designs ourselves. And um, let me get uh, things, bear with me just a second. We're going to work with uh, designs ourselves, but uh, I'm going to put the links in the chat for these next pages that I'm going to show you. And keep in mind, they are affiliate links. Uh, nothing's going to change with your pricing if you do buy them, but I might earn a small commission off of it. Uh, but uh, what we are going to be looking at are these bottle opening inserts. And... Uh, these inserts uh, come as a kit with all the little bottle opener inserts. They come with the screws, and this is a 50-piece set. Uh, it's $21 uh, and, uh, you know, available in just a few days. And if you have prime shipping, it's available tomorrow kind of thing. Um, but uh, I will post the links as I'm talking about these items. Uh, I will post the links in the chat. So the first item up for bids, not really, <laughs> is, um, uh, let's see here, bear with me just one second, do, 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 do. I keep wondering why nothing's working when I'm typing on the keyboard, it's because the keyboard for the computer's in my lap. All right, let's see here. Let's go to my studio where all you are hiding. YouTube studio. Hey, Rod Wallin, how you doing, bud? Hope you're doing well. All right, content. Live event. Sorry, I got to navigate through a whole stream of stuff to uh, get into things. All right, and in the chat area, that first link that I just posted in the chat there, uh, that link is for these bottle openers here. 
the bottle opener insert kits, and it comes with the screwdriver, it comes with the screws, uh, and it comes with the uh, uh, the stainless steel bottle openers, and the stainless steel is going to be good. Uh, they won't, you know, rust, corrode, or rot, and all that wonderful jazz, but uh, they come as a nice uh, little kit and everything for you for, um, for these projects and all. So this will be the main... Uh, type of bottle opener uh, kit that we're going to be looking at. All right, next, let's go to the next one. Let's see if I can get uh, this tab to pop open here. All right, the second one, bottle opener that we're going to be working with designs for designs tonight are these uh, vintage type bottle openers. Uh, that are wall hanging uh, bottle openers and everything and they come as a uh, nice little kit as well with the screws and they have kind of a brass patinaed look to them so once again uh, I will post the link to those in the chat copy and these are uh, again they'd be available next week or if you have a prime membership I'm not logged into my prime account uh, but uh, they'd be available tomorrow kind of thing. It's a 16 piece set. So they're less than a, you know, a, about a dollar something a piece uh, and uh, very good. So paste that. So that second link, hey, Stephen Main, thanks for popping in. Uh, that second link is for that. And then uh, the third and final item that we're going to be kind of designing around is going to be some rare earth magnets uh, that we'll need so that these bottle openers could, you know, uh, stick to the refrigerator or the side of a metal cooler or, you know, just hang up somewhere, right? Um, but uh, these rare earth magnets are going to be about six millimeters by uh, three millimeters. Uh, and uh, they're, they're perfect. I'll show you them when we get off the screen there. And the link uh, for those uh, that's a six dollars and 99 cents for a count of a hundred pieces uh, copy and in the chat that third link that you'll find in the chat and again ladies and gentlemen for those of you just popping in those three links are affiliate links your prices don't change but I earn a small commission I think if, if, if it might be I might earn I might not I think on my Amazon affiliates links and everything that I've ever shared on my website, I've earned a total of $7.31. Haven't even been qualified for the initial payout yet, <laughs> which is $100. But uh, so um, I don't know how big the commission is, but there might be one for me. So just keep that in mind. I got to disclose that information when I share links like that. All right. So those are going to be the three items that we're going to be working around. Uh, not working around, working with in our designs and stuff. And um, uh, we'll keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to import into the project board. I'm going to import two photos. Do, 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 do. Let me uh, bear with me just one second. Let me pop that back up over here. Okay, so the first photo is going to be this one. And the second photo is going to be this one. So this will give me my dimensions so I know what I'm working around for that and my dimensions for that part. Okay, so let's focus our attention. Let's move this one over here and this one over here. Okay. So this particular insert uh, is 1.56 inches in diameter and it is uh, 0.1 inches thick. Hey, John Thompson, thanks for popping in. John Thompson, another valued customer. John and Rod, thanks for joining us and everything. Paul Handwork, Stephen Main, all right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, but these inserts are um, 0.156. Now the screws are 0.315, so the projects, you know, we're gonna we're gonna figure out what size we want our handles, but I would recommend no less than a half inch, you know, on the parts that we're making and stuff like that, uh, because of the fact that the screws themselves 
are about 0.315 inches in length when they're countersunk. And uh, so we want to, you know, we don't want to bust through the other side, all that good stuff, right? Cool beans. Okay. So let's start off with the um, obvious here. And uh, the first design is going to be a very cool, basic, simple design. Uh, it is going to be in a circular shape. The shape is going to be uh, two and a half inches in diameter. Uh, 2.5 inches in diameter. And uh, just so we have reference, uh, we're going to have a, another circle that is going to be 1.56. 1.56 okay so you can kind of get that general idea and then we're also going to have uh, two more circles uh, that are going to be um, three millimeters uh, thick uh, but six millimeters in diameter now for those of you that do not know you can convert metric to inches by simply taking your metric number in my case six millimeters and multiply that by the letter i for imperial and hit equals and that'll convert that over okay hey keith kessler thanks for popping in um so uh 0.2355 and we're going to come and drop that there now I want uh, to make sure that this circle is centered between these two spans here. Now the easiest way to do that is to create a reference that has a center point. So if I snap to the side of my circle, and I know I'm snapping to the side of my circle because uh, the circle, let's close this and let me show you how I know. Um, in node editing, we have four points, one, two, three, four. And I have smart snapping and geometry snapping turned on at the top of the screen. These two boxes here, they should always be clicked. They should have a little box, a little blue box around them. Uh, they should be on. They're going to be so much easier for you to work with things and stuff. But if I draw a line, I can snap that line to my node there that's on the side. And I can come straight across 90 degrees and snap to that one. Now, by doing that... That line, if I go into node editing mode and I zoom in, you can barely see it. Uh, but as a matter of fact, let me turn on my little mouse, my little highlighter mouse. Okay, you can see where the mouse is, but right in this area is a small little invisible kind of square. It's not invisible, you wouldn't be able to see it, but it's, got a, it's very faint. And that's showing you the center line, the center point of that line. And what that allows me to do is I can take my circle here um, that's going to represent my magnet pocket and I can snap right to that center point. So when I get to that center point, I get this little circle with a black dot in there. And so I'm kind of snapped in there. And um, that will uh, let me know that I'm right there centered left to right and I'm using that line to help me out now I'm also going to use a line right down the center of my part so I'll snap up here at the top node I'm going to come down straight 90 degrees to my bottom there and that'll give me a center point space to finish and I can take that circle hold down my shift key and select that line and then I can use my mirror tool to flip about the line Okay, but before I do that, I want to make sure that I have create a mirrored copy selected. And then when I flip about the line, it'll just put a copy over there. Right? Cool beans. All right. Now, the uh, in here, in the center of this uh, circular uh, bottle opener insert, we have an opening here, a cavity and stuff, and uh, we want to uh, make sure that we create a pocket depth, you know, uh, for um, when we pop our bottle open, that we have a place for the bottle lid, not to go, not the actual whole lid, but like the side of it. When, it, when, it, when that 
bottle opener hooks on, we need a void behind that bottle opener so that, um, that there's an opening there. And if I could um, give you kind of a reference, let me see here, let me see here, let me see. I can give a reference round. I just call it round for right now. And let me pop that up. See if I can drag that on the screen. So I don't know if, uh, let me here, let's do this. Let's close that. Let me go into my file explorer once again. And let me pop that picture up so it's an actual photo. Let me zoom in. So you see how there's a void back there, right? Because if we don't, if we just create the pocket, that 0.1 inch thick pocket, uh, if we just put that pocket in there and we don't put a void behind it, uh, you know, uh, in the back behind it, then when you go to hook the bottle, there's not going to be anything to hook to, right? And all that. Hey, Jim, Jim, uh, Matthews, what's happening, Jim? Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Um, but uh, the uh, we need that void. Now, our void could be just a simple circle like they have here in this kind of example, or we could kind of create the similar shape of our insert, uh, whatever the case may be. You know, you could kind of, you know, take one of your inserts, trace it out, import that in and, you know, on a piece of paper and, and do a line trace on it. Or you could just, you know, uh, measure how big it needs to be and um, all that wonderful jazz. Uh, what I'm going to do is... Um, on the, let me see here, let me come back to here, and the only dimensions that I have are just the dimensions of that insert. So I don't really have a good reference on that. So. I'll just for right now kind of draw something uh, in in lieu of that. All right, so now when we create this, this is the back side. Now we're gonna have the back side uh, where the bottle opener is. This is gonna be a little handheld, keep in your pocket kind of thing, you know, on the go type bottle opener. But on the back side, it's gonna be customized. We can customize it so it makes it so it's not just a you know a piece of wood, right? We can we can customize it so that we can. Um, uh, um, you know, monograms, initials, uh, fun little sayings, whatever the case may be. And again, this is one of many designs. This is just our, we're starting out easy and then we're working our way up. All right, so what we do not need any longer are our layout lines that we used for laying out. We can remove that one um, and we can remove this one that we used to flip and everything. And the, uh, this circle here is representing the pocket for the insert, that 1.56 inches in diameter. Uh, we need another vector that's going to give us the void, uh, this void here. And um, the, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come in here like a square like that. Uh, I'm going to give that square uh, radius corners. I'll go uh, 0.25. Okay. And I'm going to, I'll get it all centered and everything in just a moment, but I'm going to kind of bring that to here. Here and I believe that's good. All right, now 
I want to take this shape and I want to make sure it's centered in this circle. That's going to be critical because, um, you know, I'm going to have screw holes and everything where it mounts, you know, at the top and the bottom and everything. So when I hold down and select this um, centerpiece first, hold down your shift key and select this outer piece. Make sure you are holding the shift key uh, to select both parts. And then I'm going to go to a line and align to selection center to make sure it's centered in there and everything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, on that part, I am going to reduce it down just a little bit. And I'm going to hold the shift key so it does it in both directions. Going to come about right there. Okay. So let's take a look at what the tool pass will, will look like for this. And then we'll go over to the other side. Uh, we will flip to the other side and um, see what's going on there. But uh, what I do want to do is I want to take this vector. I'm going to group it all together. G for group on the keyboard. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, G for group, and I want to pull it down here. Now, again, I only have a 16 inch board. Okay. Hey, David Wilson. Yes. Better late than never. I only have a 16 inch board by 11 and a quarter, right? Like I said, I'm just starting off with a small piece of wood. We can maximize this out to, uh, you know, uh, um, but what I want to do is I want to eventually when I get the vectors created and all, um, I want to uh, create an array because I want to cut out a bunch of these and everything. So for the back side here, I'm going to create a linear array. And uh, I'm going to go with, this is uh, two and a half inches. And I've got an 11 and a quarter inch board here. So I can, um, I need spacing in between the rows, right? So um, I could easily get... Uh, uh, five of these if they were butt up against each other, but I want some spacing in between so the router bit can go. So for the rows, I'm out of there. And the length, um, I can go up to about eight. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, I am buffering for some odd reason. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. Something happened that caused me to buffer. I don't know what it was. Um, I apologize about that. So hopefully you'll see. But uh, on my linear array, I'm going to go three rows. I could probably get five butted up against each other, but I want space, I was saying, before I buffered. Um, I want to go three rows. And... I want to, uh, on the columns, this is a 16 inch board. So I want to, um, I could get up to, you know, two and a half. I could probably go seven. I'm going to just go with six. And on the spacing, I want to go 0.3 inches. So 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. Now, we should be good to go. Um, and again, not sure what caused me to buffer, but uh, it's probably something overheating. I need to fix that. All right, so when I copy this array here, um, this, uh, the gap, by the way, I'm doing a gap, not an offset. So I should, uh, let's back that off, Control Z. Let's go five rows, four columns. And then let's get that centered on the board. There we go. Okay. That still leaves me room for clamps and things and all that stuff. Now, so on a board this small and everything, um, I'm going to probably be using like two-sided tape or something to hold the parts down. Uh, because I really, to be honest with you, um, I do not want to use tabs on something like this. Now, just on, on this particular round one and all, um, 
the the simple fact is uh, I don't want to have to sand all of these. <laughs> I'm being lazy. But also at the same time, they're round, right? I don't want to, I mean, I could take them up my sander. You know, I've got a disc sander. I could take them up there, spin them around a few times and smooth them out and all that stuff. And so tabs probably wouldn't be that big of a deal uh, in everything. But um, also at the same time, uh, I, I just don't, uh, I don't want tabs. I'm just going to use two-sided tape, right? So um, that's the, the way we're going to go. Um, the thing that I want to do is on my board, and I don't know why I switched over to the toolpath side yet. I'm not there yet. I want to lay out my alignment pin holes. Now, for those of you that have never worked with two-sided jobs, there's quite a few ways that you can flip a board and make sure that it lands exactly in the right spot so that all the parts come out evenly and everything. Uh, and the most effective way that I feel is the most effective way is using alignment pins. Now my pins, I actually, you know, got a steel quarter inch uh, diameter rod uh, from Lowe's and uh, I ended up cutting uh, two pieces out of it uh, that were a half inch. So I made steel pins for myself that were a half inch long, uh, quarter inch in diameter. And this way, um, 0 0.25, I can throw one, I'll throw one there and one there. And I want to make sure that those are, those two things especially, I want to make sure that those are copied to the other side. So I'm going to copy to the other side on those two. And of course, on the parameters here, I'm gonna be copying all this to the other side, but we're gonna only be using the inside vectors on the front, but all of this, I'll just copy for right now to the other side. So, and then we'll just delete what we don't need over there. Um, so let's get let's get the ball rolling with, pot, with tool pass and all, so you can kind of see what's going on and everything. Now, the, um, the magnet holes, they're six millimeters, 0.23 inches, uh, and 0.239. Um, they are uh, too small for a quarter inch bit, right? This whole project really, except for the cutout, is too small for a quarter inch bit for all the inside stuff and everything. Um, not really. That's a lie. I shouldn't say it that way. An eighth inch bit, if you didn't want to do tool change, could handle the whole project, right? Um uh, but uh, I'm going to use two bits. I'm going to use a quarter inch and an eighth. Uh, and um, I'm going to uh, be using V-bits and stuff on the other side. Unless you have a laser, you can do some laser engraving and stuff. We'll get there too. So let's start off with our main pocket here and everything. And what I'm going to do is let's first of all ungroup these vectors. So U for ungroup. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to draw from right to left and I'm going to go straight up and I want to make sure I'm touching the, all the vectors except for the center ones here. And uh, since it's only four rows on this side, I'll just go ahead and click that. But as I'm going to turn off the circles, when I go between two, if, if I go from right to left when I'm drawing my selection window, anything that my window touches, uh, it will select. So I wanna make sure that I am touching at least the vectors that I wanna turn off and um, leaving the vectors that I wanna leave on not touched, right? And so here I'll just click on these four individually. I'm holding the shift key the whole time. Now those inner pockets, uh, while I am, uh, ooh, I missed this whole row right there. Uh, with those, just those inner pockets selected, I'm gonna hit G for group to group them together. All right, now I'm going to select the um, vectors going across the row here and I'm going to hold down the shift key and reselect just the top vectors and turn them off. So those are selected, that group right there. 
Uh, I'm going to hit G to group that row together. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to select, hold down my shift key, kind of select again, just turning off, and I can hit G to group them. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a selection window. If I draw kind of right to left, anything that window touches, it's going to select. If I go through and do that again and only touch the top, it deselects them, right? So, and I can hit G for group. One more, one more. And G for group. So now I have the four groups here um, that uh, will be the kind of the main pocket for where the insert goes. And I can group those together. So now anything else left, I can now select all of this. I can turn off my two groups just by clicking on them. Right, I can turn off those two groups. And I can once again, just very quickly, uh, I'm missing some of my circles right there. Very good, cool beans. All right, I have a circle that's in a group right here. So I wanna fix that really quickly. Uh, on my inside pocket, these two circles, uh, going down the whole row, <laughs> got grouped together. So very quickly, I'm gonna hit U for ungroup. I'm gonna hold down my shift key, and this time I'm going left to right, because I wanna just select those little circles and deselect them. If I go left to right, I don't care if I cross over any other lines, it will not select them. But right to left, it would. So once again, make sure I have nothing else selected but that, and I can hit G again to regroup that. All right, let's go ahead and select this row of circles. Hold down the shift key. These two row of circles. These two row of circles. Those two, and these are the magnet holes. Right? All right, so group them together. We're getting there, we're getting there. Now I can come in and select everything here and I can turn off my three groups. And the only thing I should have left is the outside circles. I can group them together, okay? So now I don't have to one by one, I just take a few minutes, a few seconds, however long it takes you, get everything selected and um, uh, we're good to go. All right, so our first pocket is going to be the main insert pocket here. Um, and this is going to be going 0 0.1 inches deep. Now, that's how thick our part is. Our uh, bottle opener insert is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 inches thick. Now, just in case there's some deviants for whatever reason in their batch that they run or what have you, or they're, you know, whatever the case may be, there shouldn't be, but if there was, we might want to recess just a little bit. So instead of going just straight up 0 0.1, um, I'm not going to go a full 125, you know, eighth of an inch or anything like that, but I am going to go uh, 0 0.105, um, and uh, or you could go 0 0.11, you know, 10 thousandths of an inch. I don't want to go, I, I want to try to make it as flush as possible, uh, but not not too flush, right? So 0 0.15, just a nice little recess for myself. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use an, a quarter inch end mill or an eighth inch end mill uh, for these uh, pockets and everything. So that way I don't have to change. I don't have any tool change on the inside and everything. So my eighth inch end mill, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is a speed tool. Uh, I'm, I'm not sponsored by speed tool or anything like that, but it's a speed tool extra long. It's got a one inch cutting flute on it and everything. So um, uh, two flute uh, uh, speed tool, one inch long, extra long bit available at Amazon, right? All right, so we'll go ahead and hit select. I'm gonna do an offset and this is gonna be our insert pocket. And I might as well put in the 0 0.125 EM for end mill. Go ahead and hit calculate. Cool beans. Now, 
I'm gonna go ahead and hit save as real quick. Uh, should hit save as after you set up your job, so that way, you know, save early, save often kind of thing. Um, and uh, I'm gonna call this uh, round bottle opener. Let me hit save. All right, so in my preview simulation quality, let's make sure I'm not at too crazy of a height. So for speed wise and stuff like that, for our sake, um, I'll just go with a high resolution and we'll preview that visible toolpath for those of you that are visual people and want to see what things are happening here. Okay. All right, so there's that. Now, our next insert uh, holes, or our next pocket holes, not insert, our next pocket holes are the holes that are behind the insert and everything behind the insert. And so um, these are also going to be a pocket toolpath, uh, and they are going to, you know, uh, be going down. We're going to start them at point 105. That's what we, uh, you know, uh, where we ended that pocket. So start at 0 0.105 and we're going to cut down I'm going to go a quarter of an inch you know below that so 0 0.25 um, so the um, all together will be about 3 eighths uh, now you could go less than that you could go 0 0.1875 um, and uh, you got to remember you're starting at point 0.1 already like let's say an eighth of an inch so that would be a quarter inch total type of thing uh, but whatever you're doing on the other side you got to think about that are you laser engraving are you v carving you can't v carve very deep you're gonna have to do a flat depth and everything because you don't want to poke through right you know in that opening and stuff and everything so keep that in mind also going to use an eighth inch end mill for this and we're going to this is going to be our uh, relief pocket And uh, it's going to also be a 0 0.125 EM. Calculate. All right, preview the visible toolpath. Okay, now on this particular project, uh, I've got, I'm gonna resize it. I don't really need to go three quarters of an inch uh, thick unless you, you know, it, this is a palm of your hand kind of uh, project, you know, you have it in your pocket and, um, you know, you got it in the palm of your hand, you know, for a quick little bottle opener that you can snap out at parties and events and things like that. And, uh, you know, it's a good time, but, you know, you don't want it too bulky, right? So uh, half inch is good too. Uh, you got to think about, you know, all right, do I want to um, uh, run this through a planer? Am I going to surface it down uh, on the um, on the waste board? Because, you know, I'm going to go to to the lumber yard and I'm going to buy a three quarter inch board. Uh, if I go to a rough lumber yard, you know, like a sawmill type yard, it's going to most likely be, you know, uh, uh, S4, uh, uh, you know, finish and on four sides or S1 and I'll have to do all the milling work. But if I go to Lowe's or a big box store or something for oak or select pine or, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, it's going to be three quarters. And um, you can either go the full three quarters on it if you don't feel it's too bulky. If you feel it's too bulky, then half inch, you know, uh, you know, shave a quarter off. Okay. Um, uh, sound good. Sound good. All right, and uh, the uh, so on here, the final pocket for this side uh, is going to be our little magnet holes. Now, our magnet holes are 0.3 millimeters deep. Okay, so uh, again, we can type in not 0.3, they're three millimeters, not 0.3 millimeters. They are three millimeters deep. So if I take three times the letter I and hit equals, um, you know, it's going to be, you know, a little, little, little shy of, you know, eighth of an inch. 
and you can also you know go a little bit deeper you know if you want them kind of uh, flushed a little bit um, if you want them recessed a little bit don't go too deep right they're they're rare earth magnets and let me let me pop myself up here bear with me just a second let me go back full screen for just a second. And uh, so this is the magnets here. Um, and this is them. Let me let me put uh, a my hand behind so you can see them. Now that's a bunch of them stacked together. Let me just pull one off. And for comparison sake, for comparison sake, Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Let's see. What do I have that I can compare to? I don't, I don't have like change laying around. Um, but uh, my wooden pen here, but you know, this uh, ending there. Now this isn't, it's metal on the side, but not on the end. So work with me there, buddy boy. <laughs> of course, it's not going to do that, of course. But anyhow, let me see if I can, it's smaller than that pen cap. I mean, so it's, 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 it's super small, six millimeters small, right? Less than a quarter of an inch. So little guy, and these are like refrigerator magnets and all they're strong as all be it. They hold very, very well, uh, things and stuff. And, um, but uh, they come in a hundred pack and all that good jazz. Let me get them back in the case there. But uh, that's it, you know, so that's for six bucks. Not bad. Lots of them. And um, the, uh, so if I could, you know, they're, th they're, they're, they're very thin, very, very thin. So three millimeters 0.11 so we want to we we want to make sure that let me get me back down in the corner here um, if we cut our pockets and stuff we want to uh, maybe give ourselves a little bit of little bit of shyness because we got to think about epoxy we're going to be epoxy in these end like a little mixture of little two two part epoxy and get you know little squeeze things or whatever the case may be but that's going to be the best way for them is to be epoxied in. And so we might want uh, to um, come in here and I'm going to, for me, 10 thousandths is a little bit much. So I'll add another two. two I'm just going to go point one two five. 0.125 and that will give me 18 six what is that six thousandths something like that um yeah 0.125 so that'll be that should I should not be recessed too much with the epoxy and all that stuff. It should kind of bring me right just about flush and everything there and stuff. So the um, uh, eighth inch end mill, I'm going to go an eighth inch deep. Uh, and this is going to be my magnet pockets. Magnet pockets. Zero point one two five in mil. Calculate. All right, so that is our tool pass for the um, the kind of the main pockets and everything. Now we're gonna do the alignment holes, and we'll move them up in the list because I like to have them kind of cut first. But the alignment holes. Um, they are on my board uh, because my pins are a half inch thick. I always cut three eighths of an inch into my board, uh, and then I cut a quarter of an inch into my waste board, or you know whatever I'm, you know my sacrificial board that I'm using. If I do not want to have a bunch of holes all over my waste board because I'm doing a two-sided project, then I actually have a very thin 
you know, uh, half inch thick piece of uh, plywood or uh, MDF or whatever the case may be uh, that is my, it gets mounted on top of my waste board that I can flip and I don't mind drilling holes in it and stuff for the alignment pins and everything. So um, we're gonna go with a pocket tool path because I'm using an undersized bit. If, it was this, if I was using a quarter inch bit, it would be a drilling tool path, but I'm doing a quarter inch hole with an eighth inch bit. It's an undersized bit for a larger hole, so it's a pocket tool path. And the depth of cut is gonna be three eighths. And this is gonna be my alignment, alignment pin holes, okay. 0 0.125 EM, calculate. All right, I'm gonna move those up in the list. I'll just kind of have those end up cutting first. And uh, that's going to be that. Now, in some cases, ladies and gentlemen, if you were, uh, you know, um, if you were uh, using tabs and things like that, you're, you're gonna be cutting this part out from both sides. So understand this, if you are gonna use tabs, then you should really create a pocket tool path halfway through on side one, and a, or a profile, sorry, a profile tool path halfway through on side one for the perimeter and a profile toolpath halfway through on side two with your tabs, because tabs are created from the bottom of the cut up. So from the bottom of my cut up is where the tabs get created. So if I have this cutting halfway and this cutting this halfway, then my tabs are gonna get created in the middle of that part, okay? I'm not using tabs, so I do not need to create a profile cut on this side. Uh, to, you know, cutting halfway through. I can just cut all the way through on the other side um, and, and everything. So as far as my cuts for side two, they're done. All right, for this one, this one shape. So we're going to go ahead and flip this bad boy. I don't know why I opened that tab. But we're going to uh, flip our part over. And on side two here, uh, we're going to go through and delete the vectors that we do not need. And we're going to keep the vectors that we do need, right? And so um, the vectors that I do not need are everything in the middle of this. All I need are the perimeter vectors for these this back side. Okay. Don't accidentally delete your alignment pin holes or any of that stuff, but um, I just need this. Now, here's where we can get creative, okay? We can, we can do monograms, we can do uh, whatever the case would be. Just understand this, okay? Looking at, you should be able to see the faint outline of where your insert goes. Just remember, right in here at the top and the bottom, there is a screw that is going through 0.315 inches deep, okay? And our insert's gonna be flush with the bottom, so it is 0.315 when it's countersunk, 0.315 inches deep. And um, if we have a half inch piece, that's you know less than three eighths, that still gives us about an eighth of an inch to work with before we expose some screw heads, right? Or screw tips, should I say. If we're working with a three quarter inch piece, then hell, we got three eighths of an inch of material to work with and all that stuff. So you think about uh, what you wanna do. Now, I personally think that a five eighths inch, uh, 0 0.625, uh, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.625 inches uh, is kind of the best of both worlds uh, in a sense that um, I'm not too thick but I'm also not too thin where I'm poking through screw holes and stabbing myself in the hand in the palm or something silly like that. So um, the for side two, remember I'm using two sided tape, so I don't have any clamps or anything in my way and all. So for side two, there's gonna be one more vector and it's gonna be a rectangle here. And on that, 
I'm going to offset that rectangle outward by a sixteenth of an inch and deleting the original. Okay. All right. Now, monograms and cool stuff and fun sayings and logos, company logos, whether it be your company logo or their company logo, right? It could be great for like uh, office gifts. A boss is looking for something to give his or her employees. You don't have to just open beer with these. These open bottle, you know, soda pop bottles, beer bottles. Uh, um, what other kind of bottles are there? <laughs> there's, there's soda, there's beer. They won't open a wine bottle with a cork. I think that's it, just soda and beer, right? And water, maybe, it, no, there's no glass water bottles with a bottle lid. So soda and beer. So, uh, you know, companies might want to order these from you uh, to uh, give out to their employees and they might want their business name and logo engraved on it. You know, uh, it could be a V-carve engraving. It could be a laser engraving, a great choice for, you know, either a large laser or a small six watt laser or something like that, or a Turo laser, or whatever you guys and girls have. Not all of you, not all of you are my digital woodcarver customers. Um, but, uh, you know, so whatever you have at your disposal now, just so I have something on here and everything, uh, I'm going to create a couple of, um, a couple of options, uh, for myself. And, uh, let's see here if I have anything cool in the stylized words department. No. Um, so I'm going to create my own words here. Uh, these words are going to probably be very small. Let's start here. And the font, uh, I want to be something that's going to be legible, but not also something that's not, that's kind of fun and creative, but that's not too, too crazy, right? Um, something that, uh, you know, just looks good, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I don't think Bell MT is going to be it, but let's find out. So, uh, let's see. How, I wonder, I wonder if I could get this in there. Um, let's see here. And I'm definitely not going to go with the, uh, with this font, um, right now before I get, let me change fonts. Cause I definitely don't want to go with that font. It does not look good to me at all. Um, let's see here. That's, that's the same family. Let's get out of the, that's the same family. Let me see here. Not the same family, but uh, similar look. Jesus, Laney, you're you're. I must want that font because everyone I picked looks exactly like it. Okay. Yeah, we'll play with that one for just a minute. It's beer o'clock, and again. It could be for sodas too. <laughs> it's o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. Give me your uh, give me your vote on this. The C and clock, capitalized or lowercase? O apostrophe clock is the C, capitalized or lowercase? Let me know. I think it's lowercase, and I need to make it lowercase, but I'm not sure. So I'm turning to you. I'm, I'm phoning a friend. Pop a top logo. There you go. Pop a top. <laughs> That's it. All right. Somebody give me an answer on O'Clock. Capital C or lowercase c? Which one? Um, I think it's a lowercase c. O apostrophe clock. I don't know. Let me know. John Thompson with the Papa Cop logo. That's cool. All right. Now I want to center that. Hold my shift key down and center it in that circle. 
align to there. But I actually want to uh, center it in this one. Oops. I want to center it in here. Lowercase c, I believe lowercase. Okay, that's cool. We'll go with the lowercase c. Now, the um, we're just going to go, you know, spirit clock. You could have all kinds of fun with it. You could do all kinds of cool things, right? Pop a top. It's beer clock. The best beer is an open beer. That kind of thing, you know, whatever you want. Um, the, uh, you know, uh, you could have all kinds of fun with it and stuff. We'll just go with that for now. Now, let's say that I was kind of making a run of this, right? All of them are going to have the same thing. Again, that could be monograms, right? It could have the letter A, B, C, and a beautiful monogram with some with some flourishes. And I mean, you could really fancy the shit out of these, right? You know, you could get them really, excuse my language, for any children that are watching, sorry, youngins that are using me to fall asleep. Apologize for the language. Um, but uh, the... Um, Change the font on o'clock. There you go, Jim. Change the font on o'clock. Give it a give it a little bit of a funner font. Uh, all right, let's break this up into lines. So I wrote it as a text block. We're gonna break that text block into lines so that I can, um, you know, come in here and move that up just a little bit. Oh, clock, we'll go in there so we can work on that. So break the text block into lines and we'll come in, um, whoa, not that font for sure. Let's go. Nope, that's too, been there, done that. Let me see what I got here, what do I got? Nope. Come on, I know I got a, a million fonts here. What's going to be fun and frisky? And um, Grand Avenue, Grand Adventure. What do you think? Uh, script? No script? Bigger script? Nah. Hold on a second. Let me find a different font. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your biggest struggle on CNC is finding the right font for all occasions. And we have a perfect website for that. Wordmark.it uh, is phenomenal for it. It helps you choose your font. Um, no, that's too fancy. I mean, it could be a fancy bottle top, but uh, let's see here. We'll go with that. All right, now I want to go ahead and weld that together and I'll replace it with the welded font. So let's do something like that. It could be whatever the case may be. Um, let's make beer just slightly bigger and bump it down a little bit. All right, I'm going to select all three of these objects now and make sure that they are centered uh, as a group, essentially, on my part. So select the part last. Um, I want to, uh, sorry, I want to group those together and then select the part last and align to center just to get it shifted there. And uh, we'll go there. All right, Jim, thanks for that. We'll we'll find a better font, but that, that's going to work. Just something, yeah, it kind of gives it just a little bit of style. It's not so cookie cutter and all that. We could have all kinds of fun with it. Um, now, I want to, uh, I want to array this, right? And my parts and everything, I kind of need to know the math on the spacing to get these perfectly centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key or I'm sorry, my control key, and I'm going to grab the center of this and snap it to the center of here. And I'm also going to grab and snap it to the center of here. Okay. And um, sorry about the phone. 
Um, what I'm going to do is uh, my spacing. I want to take two measurements. I want to take my measurements uh, from left to right and from right to left or uh, top to bottom because when I create my array of this, I want them to I want to drop them all in there and everything. Uh, I can use my gap, the gap from the left side of one part to the right side of the other, or I can use an offset left side of one to the other, uh, or you know top to bottom. Unfortunately, it doesn't have center to center like spacing on center kind of thing. Um, but uh, I'm gonna just use my uh, offset and everything. And the question of the day is, you know, how do you, uh, how do you know your left to right and all that on something like this, you know, where's your measurement? Well, when I come in here, I mean, you've got to think about like a rectangle, you know, it's going down the absolute furthest distance to the left, to the right, to the top and to the bottom. So if I wanted to, and let me undo this, control Z twice. All right, to get rid of those copies there. And to make things, when it comes to layout and everything, to make things kind of simpler, um, I can snap, if I have smart snapping and everything, I can grab and snap to the left side of this part. I can come down and snap to the bottom of this part. Grab it, snap to the top of this part. And uh, these two should be on the same plane. They are. And one more time, grab this. And just because I'm grabbing it in the middle, I could still move my mouse down and snap to the outside, you know, of that part and everything. So that gives me my 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 uh you know size of that that particular text now once again i'm going to select all of this i'm going to grab it in the center i'm going to hold down my control key and i'm going to snap to the center of this object here okay and um i'm going to do the same thing up here snap to the center there now if you're not 100 percent sure you're like oh man am i am i centered and all that good jazz and blah 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 um, you can hold down your shift key and select that, come in here and align to that last selection to make sure it is centered, right? You can select this first, this last, and align to center, right? And we are, so we don't have to move. Now I can measure, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure uh, vertically first, up and down, and... I'm going to use the offset. So from the bottom of one part to the bottom of the next, my measurement is 2.8. And from the left side of one part to the left side of the next, my measurement is 2.8. Should be. Right? Not really, but that's the measurements. 2.8, 2.8, right? So now in my linear array, I can go ahead and I've got that figured out. I can delete that and that and I don't need this anymore so I can select this go to my linear array uh, same amount of rows and columns but I'm going to be using an offset and that number is going to be 2.8 on the X oops I said 8 and type 5 2.8 on the X and 2.8 on the Y and I'm going to go ahead and copy those. Okay. That'll get that centered and laid out. Um, book them, Dano. Check it in. <laughs> hey, Daniel Brandon, what's happening, buddy? Uh, but um, uh, Stephanie, I didn't even see you pop in. Stephanie's here. Thank you for stopping in, Stephanie. I didn't even see you pop in there. I was too busy focusing on the design. Uh, good to see you. Thanks for popping by. Um, the... Um, uh, the layout is done now and all that wonderful jazz. Uh, let's go ahead and do some tool pathing. So the first tool pass that I'm going to go ahead and create is going to be my waste board alignment holes. So this is going to be a pocket tool path. I'm going to be cutting a quarter inch deep into my waste board. 
uh, with my eighth inch end mill and this is my I always label it waste board so I know which one's the top of my board and my waste board board alignment holes 0 0.125 end mill calculate those all right now these will not get cut on this board side and get cut on the waste board before we put the board in place uh, let's see here we're going to select um, we're going to select our little decals and again these could be anything use your creative mindsets and it could be like I said monograms with really nice you know all different types of letters you can man you can knock these things out in bulk um, and um, it could be monograms it could be uh, with, with nice little flourishes it could be logos for businesses it could be names it could be whatever right uh, and you can have fun with it. Now we're going to do a V carved toolpath. This could also be a laser engraving. I'll show you that as well. Um, but uh, we're going to start at zero. And I don't want to go too deep with this. Um, but uh, I don't want to go too deep with this. But um, uh, so I'm going to limit the cut uh, to an eighth of an inch is kind of my maximum depth on here. I'm going to use a 60 degree V bit. It's way too small. It's way too small for uh, you know a clearance tool to fit in there. Um, could possibly get in there with a with a uh, a sixteenth of an inch end mill or something like that. But we're just gonna let the V bit do the work, and this is gonna be my mono uh, my my text center object. That's what I'll call it. I don't know. We'll give it a name. Uh, 0, 060 DEG V bit. All right, calculate. Okay. Preview the visible tool path. Okie dokie. Now, I said the holes are not going to get aligned in there. And what I do, I, dr I, I drilled the holes right in the board. Don't do that. That's, that's the waste board only. All right. So there we go. Now, our perimeters and everything. Now, we're not done yet. We, we, there's still one more toolpath that's going to be done before all these. I'm just kind of talking about the parts right now. Let's, let's talk about the main toolpath. The main toolpath is going to be this rectangle. I am going to mill this down from a 3 quarter inch board to a 5 8 uh, I'm going to bring it down just to give it a little bit of thinness. So um, the... Uh, first, uh, the main toolpath is uh, going to be a surfacing toolpath. Now, I'm not going to do a pocket cut where it cuts back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, anytime I'm surfacing, I don't care if I'm surfacing a waste board, uh, and I don't care if I'm surfacing a project board like this or a cutting board or whatever. I want to surface in one direction only. I don't want to go back and forth. I want to surface in one direction. It's going to be a conventional cutting direction. Uh, so either from right to left or bottom to top, you know, whatever the case may be. But uh, we're going to go uh, in a conventional cut. And so for me, um, my surfacing bit, and I'm going to show you, you're going to get a little quick lesson on how to surface, uh, set up a surfacing toolpath. My surfacing bit is an inch and a quarter in diameter. Um, by the way, if you guys and girls see weird stuff from me pop up in the chat, it's because I'm <laughs> typing all these numbers in on a keyboard. If I hit enter, it's all going to pop up in the chat. Uh, so, uh, but uh, my bit is an inch and a quarter in diameter, my surfacing bit. And if I take my surfacing bit here and let's move the surfacing bit to the edge of my board. So I want the center of my bit to be right on that bottom left corner of the board there. And then I'm going to move it away from the board by a sixteenth of an inch. So negative 0 0.0625. And what this visualization, forget the rectangle for a minute that you see there, but what this visualization is, is that bit off the edge of my board by at least a sixteenth of an inch, the full bit. Now I'm going to mirror that to the other side. So I'm going to open up my mirror tool and I'm going to create a mirrored copy, flip to the other side, 
So I have it on that side as well too. And now I'm going to draw a straight line from the back to the front and space bar to finish. And that's going to represent my surface path coming back to the front. Um, and now I'm going to take that line and I'm going to offset it across my material based on the, I'm using the offset tool. It's down here at the bottom. Uh, I'm using it uh, based off of my bit. So 1.25 divided by, no, I'm sorry, not divided by, times 0 0.4, which is 40% of my bit. And that's going to be 0 0.5, half inch. So I'm going to have select new selected, and I'm just going to start hitting select. And I'm going all the way across, select, 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 all the way across. And that's all I need to go there. And those tool paths, I'm gonna select those lines from right to left, I'm selecting in this order, okay? So right to left, straight up from bottom to top. Turn off that circle, don't need it. All right, stand by. Don't, when you're clicking on things, don't be dragging stuff around. Okay, one more time. Select the vectors. Hold the shift key. Turn that off so it's just those selected. It's going to be a profile cut. I'm going to be taking off um, of my board uh, width, which is Z equals. Z equals. All right, so that's my board, 0.75. And I'm going to um, take that Z and I'm going to subtract what I want to keep. So I want to keep uh, 5 eighths. Okay. I want to keep 5 eighths of my board. So uh, 0 0.625 uh, and hit equals. So I'm only cutting an eighth inch deep, right? So. I'm just doing the math. You could just type, you could do it in your head. You don't need to type it out all fancy like that, but you can. That's what the software is cool about, you know? So Z or T, Z or T, Z for Z axis, T for thickness of your material, minus how much you want to keep equals how much you want to remove, right? Right. All right. I want to be cutting on the line in a conventional cut. And on my order, I'm going to uncheck all these and I want to use the vector selection order. And my start at, I want to keep my current start points. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be my surfacing toolpath. Now I'm taking that much meat off, uh, but you know, you can... Um, do the same thing if you were surfacing a waste board and taking ten thousandths off and things like that and everything. Uh, just make sure you're, you know, you're making the appropriate pass depth. If you want, I'm doing this in one pass, an eighth of an inch off. Um, if you want to do it in, because it's two-sided tape and you're worried that it might, the tape might not hold uh, in, it might push the board or something like that, it, you know, being an aggressive cut. Don't sweat it, don't stress it. You can click on edit passes right here um, and you can go in and you can set however many passes you want, right? Two passes, three passes, whatever you're comfortable with and everything like that, okay? Um, I'll do two passes. It's only uh, you know 11 and a quarter inches. It's not gonna take long to do. And um, this is gonna be my uh, surface to size, surface to size, and it's my 1.25 ml. All right, so we're going to calculate that and everything. Uh, now, because I did that in the design here and everything, because I'm surfacing that off, that surface toolpath is going to be first, ladies and gentlemen, right? Now, uh, after the after the waste board alignment, well, that surfacing toolpath is going to be first. Now, you would think, Laney, if I'm surfacing that off, do I need on my text and everything here, 
do I need to put that number, that eighth of an inch there so it carves down on that and everything? And the answer is no, because you're gonna be zeroing out your Z on that newly surfaced board. Now, if you were surfacing out on your waste board, um, then yeah, you would want, you need to account for that, you know, that material that you're removing because the project is set up for a three quarter inch board. Hear me out. The project is set up for a three quarter inch board. If I'm zeroing out on my waste board, then it knows the top of my project is three quarters of an inch away from zero, right? If I remove an eighth of an inch of that, then I need to make sure my other tool pass kind of start at that eighth inch down and everything. But in this case, I'm zeroing out on the top of my project board and um, the, uh, the surfacing toolpath gets run first. It gets thinned down to its size and then I'm zeroing down, um, I'm zeroing on that newly surfaced board. So everything cuts you know, from zero, that, that surface board, because it's gonna be the top. But if I was surfacing, if I was zeroing out, let me get my, so I don't get tongue tied. If my Z zero position was the machine bed, the waste board, then I would absolutely need to make sure that I account for the eighth of an inch in the start depth. And then I'm, you know, um, flattening out an eighth of an inch below that in my text, you know, and all that, even on the profile cut, cutting it out. Don't want to cut air for the first, you know, round and all that stuff. But in this case, I'm surfacing on the material surface, that surfacing toolpath, I'm, I'm, I'm not surfacing on the material surface, I'm zeroing out on the material surface, and that surfacing toolpath is getting run first. When I zero out my next bit, I'm zeroing out on that beautifully new surfaced area there, and so it, I do not, my start depth is zero, okay? Zero for that toolpath, all right? So just remember that. Now, when I preview this, right? When I come in here and preview this, my surfacing toolpath gets done first, right? Preview the visible toolpath. It's gonna go through and it's going to get, um... <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Bum, bum, bum. Change your bit to the right size bit. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on a second. Um, select, recalculate. All right, let's do that one more time. Um, so when that bit gets surfaced and everything and all, it's going to, uh, that eighth of, it's going to take off that whole eighth of an inch material and then all my other toolpaths are getting cut down on there. So, um, that's where I zero out and everything. Hopefully you understand. Hopefully you're not confused by that. Just let you know. Now, normally I will say this for myself. Normally... Um, I am zeroing out on the waste board. When I'm cutting parts out, I do not want to uh, cut into and tear up my waste board and stuff. Uh, I'm very big about do not spoil your spoil board. Don't, don't do it. Um, and by zeroing out on the top of my board in this particular setup, I'm going against everything that I believe. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I'll change it here in just a second. But um, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm cutting through. I'm going to start at 0.125 and I'm going to cut through another 5 eighths for a total of 0.75. I'm not going to add 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 just to make sure I cut through the parts and all that stuff. You know, that's improper machining. You know, if you do that, it's a bad habit to get into. If you want to be assured that you're going to cut all the way through your material first time around and that you're not going to spoil your spoil board, then zero out on the waste board and work from there. And I'm going to do that here in just a second after this. Um, and I'll, matter of fact, I'm going to stop it here and fix myself because as I'm talking out loud, I'm like, Lanny, what are you doing? Um, let's see here. 
what is the difference from normal surfacing? This is normal surfacing. There is no difference, but I've seen people surfacing their waste boards and, or, or whatever, they're surfacing anything and they're, they're, they've got a rectangle and they do a pocket cut. And it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I cringe when I see that because we're going conventional climb, conventional climb, conventional climb. And every time on that climb cut, now we're working with the bit and everything and it's burning. You know, it's going to, it's just building up heat and everything and, and all. Um, we should be, you know, that bit spinning clockwise and everything, we should be going, you know, in that, uh, that conventional cut uh, to, um, you know, uh, on our surfacing tool bass, we're going to cut in one direction. Um, we don't want to climb cut. We want to do a conventional cut. It's going to be build up less heat. And, um, you know, it's not going to, you know, uh, we're going to be kind of working with the cutter and everything. So the back and forth kills me. But uh, we want to go in one direction only as a conventional cut. Okay. Um, all right. So now the... Uh, let me reset this preview because I'm going to go into my job setup and make a quick change. On my um, side here, I'm going to, uh, for side two, um, uh, I'm going to choose the option to zero off the same side. Uh, and what that's going to do is on side two, I'm now going to be zeroing off the waste board. So I'll be zeroing off on the top of my material for side one. I'm not doing any cutouts or anything on side one. Zeroing out on the top of my material and, uh, you know, just uh, cutting there. But when I flip that board over, that side one is now on my waste board, right? So I'm going to zero off the same side. So that way I'm zeroing off the waste board for that side two cut, that final cut and everything. So let's go ahead and now that we have that fixed, we got to fix two things or one thing. Um, it's going to ask if we want to recalculate the tool pass. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And what I want to do is let it go through and do that. All right. Now on my bottom side here, let's go ahead and turn this off. On my bottom side here, my wasteboard alignment holes have nothing to do with this board. They get they get cut on the wasteboard. Zero out on the wasteboard. And uh, you're going to, uh, you know, cut there. The thing that matters is, is because I'm zeroing out on the waste board, follow along with me for those of you that are just getting started with this. I don't want to confuse you. But because I'm zeroing out on the waste board, the very item that I'm actually cutting into for the alignment holes it thinks, Vatric thinks that I'm uh, zeroing out on the waste board, but I have a three quarter inch board. It thinks these holes are getting cut into my project board. It doesn't know that they're getting cut into my waste board. They're getting cut into my project board. So it's, you know, it's going to, right now, if I left it just like this, starting at zero and cutting a quarter of an inch, it's going to raise up. It's going to clear my three quarter inch board that's not there. Right, and it's gonna come down and just start cutting in the air, and you're gonna be like, why isn't it going down to the wasteboard and all that? So our start depth for the wasteboard alignment holes is going to be 0 0.75. We have to account for that board not being there. Okay, so we're starting down 0 0.75, and from there we're cutting another quarter of an inch into the wasteboard. All right, I need a thumbs up from everybody that y'all understand what I'm talking about. We are zeroing out, zero is the waste board. In the project, we have a three quarter inch board. The waste board alignment holes that actually get cut into the waste board are getting cut into the waste board, not the top of the project board. Vetrick thinks that they're getting cut into the top of the project board, but they're not. That project board's not in the picture at the moment. So we need to account for that three quarter inch board that's not there to make the bit go down three quarters and then start cutting a quarter inch into the waste board. Everybody, give me a thumbs up if you know that, if you're if you're with me, okay? Now, if you're zeroing out on the top of your material, then you don't need to do that. You don't need to put the 0.75 in there. All right, so we got to calculate that. All right, Brooks is tracking with me. Come on, I got Sylvia tracking with me. Let me see some thumbs up in the group chat. 
I'm with you. All right, Roger. Thank you. All right. So the surfacing toolpath. Nothing changes with that. I'm, you know, even though I'm starting at zero and cutting an eighth inch deep, it's counting for my waste board. It's only going to cut an eighth of an inch off. Okay, so that's good. This one's done. The surfacing toolpath is done. Now my V carve. This is this is the V carve here. This is where I've got to. Now that I'm zeroing out on the waste board, it's still thinking that everything's getting cut on top of this one eighth or three quarter inch board. Right, but I've just milled off an eighth of an inch of it, so I have to start at 0.125 down. Okay, because it's not there anymore. I just surfaced it all off, an eighth of an inch, and from there I'm limiting the cut to another eighth of an inch. Okay, all right. So that's my changes and everything. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what this would look like. I'm going to turn the preview simulation down really low so it's fast as all be it. Uh, and um, we're going to go ahead and preview the visible toolpath. Okay. It's going to go through and uh, it's going to do this in two passes. I've got it set for two passes. I really only need to do one. But like I said, I'm using double-sided tape, and if you got that, you know, if you're worried that your double-sided tape won't hold, I know mine will. But um, uh, you can be conservative. You don't have to be so aggressive. Don't be so aggressive. <laughs> All right. So we got to move along. We only got one circle design. Come on. There's a whole lot of different designs going on here. All right. Following right along. Okay. Now, I'm going to um, let it get about halfway through. You'll see that's being surfaced, right? And all that jazz. Uh, and uh, I'm going to stop the cut right about here. Okay. And then I'm going to show this cut. You're only going to see the, uh, you know, the bottom here. The bottom is what's right. The rest of the rows are going to be way too deep. But I just for time's sake, so we can move on. So preview the visible toolpath. You'll see those cut beautifully because they're in that surface area. And you'll see those are too deep because that material is still there when it shouldn't be. You know, that kind of thing. So ignore the top half of this. It's only the bottom row that's been surfaced off, right? So everything looks normal. Uh, but that's for time's sake. So that's going to be that cut. I just want you to see those cuts, okay? All right. And then the final cut for this project, we can go ahead and take these uh, surfacing toolpaths and move them to another layer. Uh, and we'll call this our surfacing vectors. Let's try this. Surfacing vectors. And let's make that invisible and click OK. All right. Our next toolpath is our profile cutout. Uh, we're going to go ahead and come in here and select those and those. Hold the shift key when you do that. Profile cut. Cutting down the thickness of my material, but I've already removed an eighth of an inch of it. So I'm going to start at one, two, five, zero, two, five. And I'm going to cut down another five eighths, 0 0.625. 0 0.625 plus 0 0.125 is three quarters. Right oh. Right -o. Okay. Um, I'm going to be using my quarter inch end mill. Kind of line cut on the outside of the line. I'm not doing any tabs, ladies and gentlemen. I'm using double sided tape, no tabs. Um, I. Uh, Let me think here. I'm going to add a ramp. I haven't done a ramp in a while. So uh, the ramp is going to be a uh, half inch, 0 0.5, twice the diameter of the bit. It's going to be a zigzag kind of ramp. And um, actually, I'm going to go spiral because it's a circle. I'm going to go a spiral. Nope. Sorry. Smooth, not spiral. Smooth. Smooth ramp.
Beautiful. All right. And um, I'm going to turn off the animation and I'm going to quickly see if I can quickly do this preview all sides. Let's see how how fast it will uh, process without the preview happening. Hey, Richard, like that little emoji there, man. Like it, like it. Cool beans. All right. Now, I wish there was a one fell button to remove waste. We need a button over here that says remove waste. Um, can't even create a macro for that. All right, so if we turn this around, you know, there's our parts, you know, our magnets and everything go in, our little caps get screwed in and everything, and uh, there's our little little handheld bottle openers, okay? So that's going to be, uh, you know, one sheet. And what do we have? We had uh, four times six, uh, 24 of these uh, in that one little 11 and a quarter by 16 inch piece of material. Um, so uh, not bad. And now let me just say this, ladies and gentlemen, if you have enough room and you wanted to give it a small uh, edge, you know, round over type thing, um, the uh, one thing that you could do is the white side 2050 eighth inch round over uh, is a nice little bit uh, for softening up edges and stuff. We could come in here and, because imagine it's going to be in the palm of your hand. You don't want those sharp edges. So you're either going to be sanding those edges down or you could do, you could run a little round over toolpath before you run your profile cut. And uh, it would be a profile cut with the particular, if it's the 2050, if it's the, if it's the white side 2050, we're starting at an eighth of an inch. Remember, we milled off that eighth of an inch. This is the only time we're starting. That's the only reason it's not zero, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, we milled that whole surface off. We're going to cut down a quarter of an inch deep. Uh, we're going to use the white side 2050 round over bit, eighth inch round over bit. And um, the uh, offset allowance is a negative 0 0.125. Okay, negative, stepping over. We calculate this. This will be like the edge round over, edge round over. Uh, WS 2050 and then calculate that and what that will do let me let me see if I can zoom in here and everything uh, when we preview that toolpath now you would run that toolpath before you run the profile cutout but if you can see it's a little pixelated because I got the I got the I got for time sake and everything I got the the, the resolution turned down real low ladies and gentlemen but all we're doing is we're breaking that surface, right? Giving us a nice little round over, right? Right. Now the pixelation and everything again, because it just times like fast. We got it. We got to move along. It's already 850. Um, and uh, Jim says, uh, can you explain why this is better than a pocket cut? Isn't the profile doing the same conventional and climb cuts? No. Uh, the... Uh, the question is on the surface cut on the surface cut is it doing the same uh, climb and conventional cut and everything on that surface cut and all and give me just one second here bear with me just one moment don't know who changed my uh um, passes on my damn uh, uh, surfacing bit, so it's only one pass. All right, calculate. Oh, I did. I changed. <laughs> I'm like, who changed my pass? I made it uh, three passes. But um, uh, let me show you what's happening here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. One pass, three pass, but one pass will be visually. You'll able to be able to see it better. Let me reset the preview so it's all blanked out. So what's happening, Jim, is uh, the I'm starting at the bottom left corner here. So when I hit start, it's going to raise up. It's going to rapidly move to my start point back here on the back of the the um, 
the let me get this in the middle of the screen here turn a little bit okay so it's going to rapidly raise up and it's going to go back here it's going to come down it's going to make its cut it's going to raise up and it's going to rapidly move to the next line come down and cut raise up move to the next line come down and cut it's not cutting on the return it is not cutting on the return Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm buffering, so let me stop buffering. I'm buffering. Sorry about that. I'm buffering, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do that one more time now that I'm not buffering. Jim, to answer your question, because I don't know where it's going to show or where it's going to stop and all that stuff, but... Uh, we're going to start, it's going to start at the, my zero point here on the bottom left corner. When I hit start, it's going to raise up. It's going to move back to the start point of the vector. It's going to carve all the way across. It's going to raise up. It's going to move back to the next line, come down and carve, raise up, go back to the next line, come down and carve and carve. It's only carving in one direction. Um, it is, uh, on my end, I was buffering. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks, John, for letting me know. Thanks, Mark, and all. But uh, it's carving in one direction only. One direction, not back and forth. So it's it's when it makes that conventional cut, it's raising up and returning back to the start point. So when we have the tool path on that surfacing tool path, we have the start at keep current start points. It's going to return back to the start point and cut. It's going to return back to the start point and cut. Raise up and turn. It does not cut on the return back. We're only cutting in one direction. We only surface in one direction. Now, you're going to see any other, anybody else out there, you know, that are that, that do surfacing cuts, you'll look at their vectors and all. They create a rectangle and they're just doing a pocket cut, right? Back and forth, back and forth. I guess whatever you you know whatever you want to do whatever gets the job done but uh you know that can cause burning on the way back you know it can build up a lot of heat and it can dull your bit and everything uh and also um you know it's just less wear and tear it's a better finish you know uh and everything on a surfacing cut and also cutting in one direction conventional cut back to front or bottom to top whichever way you have your board turned and everything Okay, so it's only cutting in one direction. That's why it's better. Jim Matthews, hopefully that answered your question, buddy boy. All right, all right. Thanks for the question. It was a great question, Jim, because, you know, uh, there was probably other people that are wondering the same thing. Um, let's see here. Yeah, thanks, John. It was, uh, it was doing four passes because I had it set to four passes, so it wasn't taking... Uh, I, I was talking earlier and I said, if you want to, I, I was showing how if they wanted to edit passes, you know, to remove that material, if they thought it was too aggressive because it was on two sided tape and not being clamped down, they could, you know, adjust their passes and everything. And uh, I forgot that I set it to four passes, but it would still cut pass. It would raise up, pass, raise up, pass. It would do the four passes and then it'll move to the next one. So. Okie dokie, tokie dokie. All right. All right. So let's get that back. Let me fix that uh, there. Calculate that. Okay. So that is that, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, hey, Mark, Lindsay, how you doing, buddy? All right. Let's go now. Let's come on. Let's uh, let's 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 get on to some other designs and everything. Uh, we're gonna create another sheet, a new sheet. Um, add a new sheet. Same parameters on that sheet. I'm going to be happy with it. I don't need to do anything different. Okay. And then just, I'll just leave it labeled sheet two. And um, the... Let me look at something here. My image. Let's move that one to... Sheet two, move that one over there. Uh, this one over there, move to sheet two. Okay. All right, let's go on to sheet two. 
now what I before I go on to sheet two, I want I want these vectors right there. So let me get back on here. I want to steal I want to steal a vector. Um, I want to steal this. It's grouped together. That's okay. I'll just copy the whole group over. Copy to sheet two. Uh, not move. Not move. Undo that. <laughs> copy, bad boy. Copy. Hold the shift key down. Copy to sheet two. All right. Let's switch over to sheet two. Okay, on sheet two, uh, I'm going to ungroup, U to ungroup, U to ungroup. Okay, cool. And I really only want one of these. Okay, my next one, all right, my next one here. Uh, the next one we're going to do is going to be a handheld. It's going to have kind of a handle to it and everything. So let's start with, uh, this will be my insert, okay? My insert pockets. Those are my insert pockets. And for those of you that might be joining me late, those are based off this insert here. The links are in the chat. Scroll all the way back up in the chat if you can, and uh, you'll see three links And for these inserts. Um, they're 1.56 inches in, in diameter and they're 0.1 inch thick. And this is what this represents here. Um, this is for the pocket cuts for that. So we're going to be using that here in just a moment. I'm going to hit G to group those two together and I'm just going to drag them down here for a minute. Okay. Option number two, we're going to do some, uh, we're going to do, I'm just going to draw out the profiles uh, in the shapes of what these handles could be. Uh, and then uh, we want to, we're going to end with a bang, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Um, uh, because there's still the wall hanging one. And hell, I might have to break this up into two if we get too late here, but let's see what we got. First one is uh, that we're going to do, um, I'm going to take, this 1.56 inches in diameter, right? Uh, I'm going to offset that outward. And what I'd like is I'd like uh, at least, um, at least 3 16 of meat around the outside of it. Uh, so I'm going to offset that outward 0.1875. Zero point one eight seven five. Okay. Oops. All right. Now, I don't want this inside one. That inside offset. Oops. Don't move when you're when you're when you're clicking stuff. Don't accidentally drag it around. But I want this. Now, the I'm going to go with a rectangle. And on this rectangle, that's not a rectangle, Lenny. What in the world are you doing, son? Draw a rectangle. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to snap to this edge for a second. And uh, on the length, on this length, I'm going to, I think, um, if that's one and one, one inch, 1.56 is my diameter. Um, and I want to have, some room to put some stuff in the middle. Let's go. Let's go uh, six and a half, in six inches on the height of this rectangle here. Six inches. And it's already 1.935. I'm just going to make that an even two inches. Two by six there. There we go. All right. Cool beans. 
Um, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to go into node editing. And I'm going to turn this line into an arc on the end of that rectangle there. I'm going to turn this into an arc at that end. And I should, when it's all said and done, that's eight inches. I kind of want seven. <laughs> I want seven. Um, what did that arc add to it? Hold on a second here. If I was at six, I'm going to do vertical measurement. I just want to see what that arc added from this arc to the node right there. It added one inch. Okay. So then undo. I'm going to make my rectangle five inches tall because I want it to be seven when it's all said and done. So let's go back to the size tool and let's make this five. Good. And then node editing, ladies and gentlemen, we're turning that to an arc on this end and an arc on this end. All right. Um, the shape here, the whole purpose of me keeping that circle there is just because I want to kind of, I want, uh, I, we're not going to use this circle here in just a second. Uh, but I want to, uh, you know, make sure I have that 3 sixteenths here. I'm a little wider. Remember, I went two instead of 1.9, blah, blah, blah. 1.935 was that. But I want that little bit of meat there. Otherwise, if I want to kind of, you know, be even and everything, I could, um, uh, and I'm not going to be precise on this because I don't have, the, you know, that kind of time. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to... Just bump it up. Okay. So I could have that kind of consistency around there. Doesn't matter to me, whatever floats your boat. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of that circle. And my opening is going to be there. Okay. All right. We're going to draw a line. So this is going to be shape one. Let's draw a line here um, right at the center of my part find that center line there select this outside circle here hold down the well it's gonna select both but hold down the shift key select this line and flip it about that line um, now ungroup you to ungroup and get rid of this center piece right here now this is going to be a through pocket cutting all the way through. It's going to be kind of like a finger, you know, a finger twirler. <laughs> Kool-Aid. Finally, somebody used my thumbs up emoji. Very cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. You, uh, you, uh, uh, you know, uh, members, paid members and everything. You have those uh, custom emojis that I made. <laughs> um, the, uh, um, yeah, hey, Darwin, you can use a surface planer first. You don't have to surface on the CNC. Uh, you can absolutely run your board through the surface planer, my man. Um, Doug, yeah, that's awesome. You don't have to, you don't have to use the, uh, you don't have to use the, the surfacing tool path and, uh, and everything. So, for sure. All right. All right, so this is design number two. We'll get to the tool pass later, but this will be our uh, little finger holes and all that wonderful stuff. So that's design number two. And in the middle here on the other side, right, two-sided project, again, an engraving. It could be a logo. It could be someone's name. It could be a family name, the, the, the Rochesters, right, whatever. You know, you can do all kinds of nice uh, customizations in there, or you could do some nice generalizations. You could make some funny, cool sayings, you know. It could be, uh, you know, company logos. Use your imagination and, and, and all that stuff when it comes to that design. Um, let me delete that line. Don't need it anymore. But this is design number two, so we'll just move that off to the side right there. Uh, design number three. 
Uh, I'm going to actually take, um, turn this off. Got to quit. I got to quit uh, clicking on stuff. Control and drag a copy over. Design number three. We're going to go with a smaller circle here. Uh, let me find kind of the center and go with a smaller radius there. Um, I'm going to keep this radius. That just shows me I'm not centered up and down. Let me see here. There we go. <clears throat> um, we can get rid of. <laughs> Close your tools when you're done, Laney. There you go. We can get rid of that. All right. Now, tangent line. I'm going to take a line tool and I'm going to click on the side of this circle. I'm connected to it. I'm going to hover my mouse. I'm not going to click. I'm just going to hover my mouse over this second circle. And I'm going to hit the letter T on the keyboard. And it's going to snap it to the tangent for both circles. Spacebar to finish. Come over here. Click to connect. Hover. Hit the letter T. It'll connect and snap both ends of that line to their tangents of those circles. And then we can come in here and use our scissor tool and trim. All right. And trim there. And um, this actually did not need to be that long. It didn't need to be the, as long as the other one. Let me undo that really quickly. I want to actually move this circle down a little bit. It's going to be a little short guy. About like that. Let's do that one more time. Line. Click. Hover. Hit the letter T. Spacebar. Click. Hover. Hit the letter T as in Tom. Spacebar. Use your scissors. Trim, trim. Okay. This is all, all of these, all these shapes so far are using this round 1.56 by uh, 1.56 by uh, 1 8th or 0 0.1 inch thick insert. Okay. All right. Cool beans. Um, next one is going to be similar to this shape here. Uh, no through hole and everything. Um, I'm going to take, uh, I'll just keep using this as kind of my starting reference. Control key, drag that over. Um, I'm going to circle, find the center there and drag a circle out to there. Uh, this one, we will go same length, same length, same length, same length. Yeah, same length is fine. Um, we're going to, the width is going to change a little bit. Uh, we're going to take a line. We're going to find, I got to find my center. There's my center. Snap from there to there. Space bar. We're going to take this circle right here and we're going to select this line and we're going to mirror flipping about that line. Okay, and once we do that, I can then get rid of this rectangle and this line once I created that reference and stuff. Now, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on this line and hover and hit the letter T, spacebar, click, hover, T, spacebar. Okay, now this line here. I'm actually, I didn't need to do that second one. Let me delete that. This line here, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to turn that into an arc. 
I'm gonna pull this in ever so. Something like that. I'm gonna take a line and go straight down that part. I'm gonna take this here, select this shape first, this second, and I'm gonna mirror it by flipping about the line, okay? I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to trim away. I'll smooth those points out in just a moment, but let's get rid of all of this stuff. We'll create the tool pass for these. I'll do them all at once so you can see all the different pockets and everything. Uh, get rid of that line. Get rid of that. Okay, this one will have a little bit of an ergonomic grip. Let's go to the node editing here. And what I wanna do is on this point in node editing, I want to, oh, it's not gonna let me smooth. I can't even hit S, can I? Let me see here. Nope. It's not going to let me smooth that out. That's all right. I'll have to do just a little bit of finessing with uh, some sandpaper. Now, uh, I want to do a little. Uh, I want to do a little strap, like a leather strop or a leather strap or something uh, here. So I'm just going to um, come in and do a small uh, quarter-inch diameter hole. So that'll be design option number three for this bottle opener, right? And then remember now, these are two sides. So this is the one side where you're cutting all the pockets for the um, uh, for the uh, uh, the metal insert to go into and all that stuff. But on the other side is where all your customizations are going to be. And uh, you can really have some fun. You can do inlays. You can do all types of different types of woods. You can... Uh, you can do company logos, you can do monograms, whatever you want, you can have fun with it, right? Uh, golf, right? Golfing uh, things for golf or whatever, uh, you know, you can, whatever, I mean, you can just do all kinds of cool stuff. All right, um, the, uh, the length of this could be much shorter, right? Uh, it does not have to be five inches long. Uh, it could be much shorter. It could, this one even could be shorter too with the through hole there. So it could be like, you know, fit in your pocket kind of thing, whatever the case may be. Um, but, uh, you know, you can change the size, you can change the shape and have fun with it. The only thing that has to be consistent, right, is where the insert goes, right? Those pockets and stuff. Again, um, half inch thick. 0.625 for me, I think would be ideal uh, and, and everything because of the screws are going 0.315 uh, into the board. And how I know that, ladies and gentlemen, is the length of the screw that comes in this kit from the tip when it's countersunk to the point, 0.315, right? Eight millimeters um, and everything. All right, so there's your rounds. Let's go with a nice, uh, let's go with a kind of a nice, um, a little bit of a squarish handle this time. Uh, we're gonna do a rectangle, not that thick. Um, I'm gonna probably go a maximum of two inches. That'll be kind of my max, two inches. And I'm actually gonna make this one shorter. Let's go uh, four, there. Um, on my, oops, on here, I can keep this one square. I don't need to, uh, let me put an arc in it. Let's, let's put the arc in it. So on this line only arc. There we go. All right, uh, let's take one of my inserts there. Hold down the control key. I'm gonna grab it right in the center. 
and snap it there. Now, I want to give this a little bit of a better shape uh, and everything. So let's go into node editing. And on this shape here, I want it to kind of come up, but then I want it to kind of come uh, in. I want it to be square. I'll put fillets. Let's do some fillets real quick. Uh, not, <laughs> not a dog bone fillet, a normal fillet. A little bit bigger. Let's go 0 0.3. There you go. All right, so just simple there. Uh, I want to have this shape. I'm gonna kind of snap it to where this node is. There's a node right here where this arc starts. And for those of you that don't believe me, let's go to node editing and click on here. And you see that node right there and right there. That's where that arc kind of starts and everything. Um, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna take the arc tool and I'm gonna kind of go to that node and it, you know, my mouse will kind of just kind of pull to it and everything. Um, but I want to come here and then I want to go right about, right about there. And I want a, that's a lie. I don't want to do that at all. I want my handle to be a little bit thinner at the bottom. So escape, let me get out of that. Uh, this node editing I want to bring the bottom in and then I want to round back out to this I want to kind of you know uh, make this just a little bit thinner so to do this I'm gonna use guidelines I'm gonna snap to the center there I'm gonna create right click on the guideline to get the properties and I'm just gonna create a parallel guide in both directions uh, and I want to go I, I want my my handle right now is two inches right I want to take a quarter of an inch off of each. So I want it to be one and a half. So that's three quarters on each side. So I'm gonna go 0.75 in a positive direction. My number lock, uh, 0.75 in a positive direction. And then I'm gonna go Yeah, that's gonna be uh, 0.75 in a negative direction. Okay. And I wanna take in node editing, I'm going to literally just select those two nodes and drag them over to here and snap them to that line. I'm gonna drag these two nodes, select them and snap them over to that line. And now I can, um, even that's a nice design in itself, turn those off. Uh, but I want to, I want to kind of, uh, I do want a little bit of an arc. I want a little bit of thinness here. Kind of like if I'm grabbing this bottle, you know, and I've got this opener in my hand, it kind of, it's kind of a, 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 a indent, if you will, for my finger and thumb to go to, you know, um, and everything. So it's not bulky right there. I want that, you know, I want to be able to just kind of, you know, have that, 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 that pressure and all. So I think I want to kind of, uh, I want to do this. Let's, let's get right about my midpoint there and let me, let me think about how I want this to look. Don't pay no mind to me just yet. Don't pay no mind to me just yet. Right about there. Now, I want uh, to draw a line down the middle I want to take this oval that I just created. I want to hold the shift key down and select this line. I want to flip about that line. I want to, this is going to create some hard spots right here, here, here in those four areas. 
So I'm going to go ahead and trim. And what I mean by hard spots is they're going to be kind of sharp there. And I have two choices on this. Um, if node editing doesn't let me smooth that point, you know, which it did, um, and everything, then uh, I could also add a fillet to that sharp point, right? And, and all. So, but uh, I can smooth. All right, and again, uh, I want to put, I'm going to use this same hole here for a leather strop, strap, strop. Uh, I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to drag and snap to the center there and pull that in just about right there. Okay, now I stole that end there uh, and I didn't hold the control key down properly when I drug that over. So let me hold the control key down properly this time and get back there. All right. So again, remember the other side is for your customizations, even on the inside. Heck, you could do some customizations on the inside too. But, but the, uh, the one thing that I would possibly recommend I don't know about the ones that would go in your pocket and all that stuff, you know, the little pocket ones and all, but what I would recommend is possibly a little magnet on this side in the center, not to catch the bottle caps or anything like that. That's the next design. That's the one that's going to go in this space right here, but uh, a magnet for hanging on your refrigerator or your beer cooler or whatever you have in your man cave, you know, uh, your toolbox, whatever. So uh, that little magnet hole that little six uh, millimeter by three millimeter deep uh, magnet hole you might want to throw a magnet on these so they can because this is all going to be flush you know right it's going to be flat and everything and uh the uh uh you know so you can uh you know if you want it to be able to stick somewhere throw a magnet in it right put a little magnet in there and, and stuff now, the last one, we're actually going to use the, a magnet uh, in it, uh, but it's going to, to catch the bottle cap, right? Uh, and so the next design is going to be um, this one here. We're going to hold down the shift key or the control key. We're going to drag that one over here and the... Bottle opener, we're going to move that up about midway, not exactly midway, right there. Cool beans. Um, on this here, we do not need uh, anything major or big right there or anything like that. So I'm going to go into node editing mode. I am going to bring that down just a little bit right about like that and all. And um, I'm going to throw a, now the size of this man, it could be that small one, but you I don't have a link or anything, an option for a little bit bigger one, but it could be that small one uh, and everything. Um, but what, what will happen here, imagine, uh, let me get myself big again, um, bear with me. Go full screen so you can see me. So imagine, what do I got? What do I got that I can use for an example here? Um, I'll use just my phone. I don't have it right now. All right, so imagine that this is the bottle opener, much smaller, right in your hand and everything. And it's got a magnet up there and the bottle opener is down here where the little fingerprint is there and all. When I'm popping that lid, right? When I'm popping that lid and that lid is popping up, you know, instead of it flinging off, you know, onto the ground or whatever, uh, when it the magnet will catch it. So when I'm grabbing here, snapping it, it'll actually the, even even far away the magnet. Where oh, I'm not on camera. Even that far away, when I'm popping it here, the magnet will kind of pull that loose cap. It'll actually catch it. Uh, those little rare magnets are fairly strong, 
but you might want to go with a little bit bigger one. But uh, I'm gonna for right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna work with the uh, six millimeter by um, three millimeter. So uh, deep six times I equals, and I'm gonna drop that right center line right about there. Now, again, that's a small magnet. So let me see if I have. What do we have here? Uh, it's got to be thin. Doesn't need to be big and bulky. Uh, let me go back to my link. Give me just a moment. Uh, the magnets. So on those rare earth magnets that I gave you the link in the chat, it has a 10 and a 15 millimeter. Uh, so still the same thinness, three millimeters thick. It's a 30 piece or a 50 piece, but 10 millimeters. Uh, so this uh, six is about a quarter, you know, it's a 0.23. Um, so uh, this is about a half inch. You can see the sizes as I hang hover over there. So that's about a fingertip. That's a little bit bigger. So the 10 millimeter, I would go with the 10, 10 millimeter. Yeah, let's go with the 10 millimeter and all. And that link will still get you there um, in the chat. All right, so let's get me back. Was my head in the way? Hold on a minute. Let's do that one more time. All right, stand by. Your goofy... Uh, me, your goofy host... Um, uh, changed his settings. Give me one moment. I gotta go the other direction. That's me. All right. Oh, I'm racing <laughs> over the screen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because your goofy hose there uh, hit the wrong button and reset himself. So let me set that to A. There we go. All right, let's do that one more. <laughs> I'm flying all over the screen. All right, on our magnets, ladies and gentlemen, here. On our magnets, that same link that's in the chat area and everything like that, uh, these magnets here, the 10 millimeter by three millimeter 50 piece, uh, the 10 millimeter is gonna be ideal, okay? So that's gonna be the way to go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's change this to 10 millimeters. And 10 times I equals Good job. Okay. And that'll be three millimeters deep, uh, 0 0.11, 0 0.125, just go an eighth of an inch deep. And uh, that'll cover for the epoxy and all that stuff and all. But um, uh, that would be your magnet. And this could be, you could have whatever shape you want. Uh, it could have a little bit of a, you know, a curve to it. It doesn't have to be so uh, straight and all that stuff. So we could come in here and... Let's take that. Out there. Draw a straight line straight down. And again, hopefully you're seeing, you know, it doesn't take it doesn't take a whole lot 
the tool pass that we created, all those tool paths will be the same, the pockets and all that stuff. You have a through hole, this big circle's a through hole, cut it through like, you know, like you're, it's a finger twirler um, and all that good stuff. But uh, let's go. Select this first. Line second. Mirror flip about line. Uh, take our scissors. Uh, this time I'm not trimming the big line. I'm going to leave it there for a second. Trim that. Delete that. Up here, we're going to smooth those points out, right? So smooth. 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 Okay. So just to give it some kind of shape. And if you want to, um, we could also take that in a notch, right? And I'm gonna pull on this one, I'm gonna pull this out a little bit, kinda come in there. Uh, it looks deformed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Doo da doo da. Let me see what I can do. Oh, da doo da ding. Let me see what I can do. Do da. Node editing. Cut the vector there. Cut the vector there. Delete. I'm going to use my arrow keys. Uh, let me undo that. Control Z. Oops, not that part. I want to select this entire arc here and I want to drag this over straight to there. Select this entire arc here. Drag that over. Use your snapping guidelines. Oops. Went too far on that one. Okay. Uh, scissors, trim, there we go. All right, so there, ladies and gentlemen, let's come over here and let's uh, group this together. G for group, 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 group. And group let's select all of those and align them um, oops like that oops hold on something did not group G for group there we go okay all right so there are for your handheld bottle openers you have your round palm openers, and then you have these others, right? These other shapes, a very basic one, uh, kind of almost like a little cone-shaped one, a little hand ergonomic, a little bit smaller one. You can do whatever you want, right? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, these will be a project uh, to example uh, in two rail sweep to make the handle ergonomic uh, hot. Yes, right? 
you could uh, you could do that. Um, you know, uh, versus just a flat part, um, you could absolutely do that. And so, what we are, you know, kind of, uh, you know, things that we are, um, you could absolutely do ergonomic, you know, handles and things like that. Whatever you want to do. Uh, now, let me see here. Let's go to our roundup, our wrap up today. Uh, we're going to talk about this uh, bottle opener. Let's create a, another sheet. I do not know what size the sheet needs to be for the material. It's going to take. It's going to be a few parts, but for right now, we're going to add a new sheet. I'm just going to leave it the 16 by 11 and a quarter for the moment, and. I'm going to copy this over or move this over to sheet three and come in here. So the tool pass and everything would be the same. The other side is how you customize it, right? So you're, you're, you would position them, do one, do a bunch of them of the same on the same board, right? You know, kind of thing. And I'll, I'll make these vectors available if anybody wants them. But, um, the, uh, uh, the backside customize however you want you can do all kinds of cool stuff um just to give you an idea right just to give you an idea just for inspiration if i drug this on the screen here so uh this one here right uh they have it kind of almost looking like a surfboard it's got a little curve in the bottom there uh, but they've got little laser engravings, a little lobster, a little marlin, and things like that. You can see kind of a picture like that and stuff. But there's all kinds of, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different shapes that you can do, right, with those little inserts. And uh, you can have a field day with them and all. Now, the next uh, that we're going to be talking about is something similar along these lines here uh, with this bottle opener. But also we're going to do a tote a toot all right uh you know and, and things like that so let's start with that first um yeah there's yeah they'd be fun to make and they're easy and and that you can sell them and all oh, you can give them away they're great little stocking stuffers and all kinds of cool stuff uh like i said the um the inserts once again These inserts are 50. Uh, they come with the inserts and the screws and everything. Uh, and a screwdriver. It comes with a screwdriver too. But 50 of them in the kit for $21. Available if you purchased within four hours. They'd be available on Sunday. If you have an Amazon Prime, they'd be available tomorrow or Thursday. Right? Uh, if you have a Prime account. I'm not logged into my Prime account. So uh, there's that. But... Um, uh, but those, uh, they're, they're great. They're easy to make, uh, scrap wood projects. They could be, hell, you could have cutting boards that you glued up and that, you know, all different, like, you know, cherry and maple and walnut and all these, you know, different, you know, crazy cutting boards that you made and, uh, but not in grain, uh, you know, the flat cutting boards and stuff. And you could have scraps left over and you could turn one of those scraps into a, you know, uh, 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 a handle, right? Um, the, uh whatever yeah could have fun with it um and all kinds of cool stuff you could uh on the little um on the little pocket deals uh and everything um yeah i mean you just have a ball with them okay Let's get, uh, let's get uh, our, the first one we're going to do uh, very quickly is we're going to do a wall hanging one. Uh, and then the second one, we're going to try to end very quickly with a tote. See what we can get done here. Uh, so on this next board, uh, this board is 16 inches long. It's 11 and a quarter inch wide. We do not need it to be that size uh, for this wall hanger. So I'm going to go into sheet three and I'm going to click edit down here for those of you that are never worked with sheets before and you're not used to it, but we're going to click edit at the bottom. Uh, it's behind the edit buttons behind me where I'm sitting and all. 
And in here on the sheet, uh, I'm gonna do this vertical up and down so you can see, uh, but we're gonna be, um, we are going to be, <laughs> what size are we gonna be, ladies and gentlemen? Hold on, I got my notes. My notes, that's not my notes. My notes, where's my notepad? Um, All right, it is going to be, it only needs to be a one by um, eight. We're gonna go seven and a quarter wide, 7.25, 7.25. And on the height, um, we're going to go, where's my ruler at? Where'd my ruler go? I just had it. Well, 12 inches. We'll go 12. Um, three quarter inch thick. And this is gonna be a single sided project unless you wanna put keyhole slots on the back to hang it on the wall. This will be hanging on the wall. So uh, if you're gonna put keyhole slots on the back, it's a two sided project. Um, it's still a two-sided project because there's a magnet back there too. I forgot there's a magnet also. So two-sided project, seven and a quarter by 12 by three quarters. So we're gonna click, okay. All righty. It's talking about some other tool pass I have. Not for this project. All right, so on side one, this particular shape, we're gonna start off with a rectangle, okay? And the rectangle is going to be, um, I wanna kinda get everything out of it. So I'm gonna go the full 12 inches on the height, but on the width, uh, I'm at seven and a quarter. I'm going to go six. Okay. I'm going to center that. And I'm going to... Bring this here. I'm gonna bring it to the edge up here, centered left to right. I've snapped to the center, left to right. So I'm snapped to the center of my board. And I wanna grab it at the top of the edge and snap it to the top there. And then I wanna move it down and I wanna move it down 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna move relative on the Y. It's a negative going down, negative 0.375. Now, the actual size of that is not gonna be that big. We're not putting a big old door hanger there. Um, but um, it is going to be resized off its center. It's only gonna be one inch in diameter. Okay. And below that, now if we look at our tool here, our tool where the screw holes and everything are, you know, well not where the screw holes, but the top to the bottom is 3.2 inches and the overall width is roughly about 2.44. So I'm gonna just draw a rectangle to represent that piece. And it's gonna be uh, 2.44 by 3.2, okay? And I wanna make sure that that is centered left to right on the material. And I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, right about there. And remember now, this is, uh, uh, it's not a square shape, you know, it, it's got a little bit of an oval, so it's only widest at the little part here. 
and everything so you can kind of you know contour whatever you want to do but this is representing of that shape and everything and I'm going to um, throw some text in here All right, I'm just going to be, uh, let's see here. Um, do I want to do their first name, the last name, the Hendersons, the... Um, we'll leave the word the out of it. Um, I'm not going to go Hendersons, but um, yeah, Henderson is fine. Uh, Henderson's. I want this to be big. I'll keep it the. No, I don't want to keep it the script. But I will make it a nice signage type letters. So uh, I'm going to come down to my royal, not royal signage. Uh, I'll use um, this. Now this is Barris uh, Seren, Barris Seren, and Barris Seren is a font um, that is available in the Heritage Font System. Uh, you can buy a whole bunch of fonts, about seven or eight fonts, and it's the Heritage Fonts. And if you look online, let me see if I can uh, pop open. If you went to Heritage Fonts, uh, this uh, it's it's by HeritageType.com, and their bundles are always on sale and all. They have a lot of different bundles, but you know it's uh, this is the bundle that I'm it's the vintage bundle set, and it has these fonts in here. Uh, the Brilliant, the Royal Signage, Old Alfie, and uh, Black River. And as a matter of fact, uh, the one I'm using is not part of that, but these are nice fonts. Uh, and it's $49 for that entire font system. And then they have other fonts um, as well, too. You know, and they come as, you know, uh, there's all kinds of different fonts and everything. But uh, they're really nice. Um, and uh, it's it's heritagetype.com. Uh Free, uh, once you own them, you can use them for both personal and commercial use. And it's a, it's 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 good all the way around. Uh, but this, that Varus must have came off of Defont.com. So I'm using that one. All right. Let's, uh, I want to do with the letter H. Okay. We're doing a split font design, ladies and gentlemen. So very quickly, let's see here. Get that centered. And let's bring that down to here. I want the word Henderson uh, centered on the H. So we'll center those two. Henderson's, I'm going to uh, make it a little bit larger. About like that. And um, I'm going to draw a rectangle. So you're kind of learning how to do split font here. So I'm going to do a rectangle. There. And... Uh, I'm gonna make sure that that is centered on this H. So hold that shift key down. Okay. I am going to offset this rectangle. I'm basically just making a copy of it. And I'm gonna hold the shift key down. And I'm gonna bring it in to right about there but oops sorry you hold the shift and the control ladies and gentlemen 
I'm going to hold the shift and control and I'm going to bring it in right about there. Um, but here on the top, I need to make sure that I am crossing over each of my letters. I don't want to do a whole lot, uh, but I want to make sure I'm touching each and every one of the letters. And since the E's are the lowest letter, then I can use that as my guide because as long as I'm just coming over it here, I know that I'm crossing over all the other fonts. And the same thing here, the E's are going to be my uh, shortest font there. So if I come in and it's as long as I get a little bit of overlap on it, I know that I'm overlapping my other fonts and everything. Now, the um, H here, uh, you can decide if you, want to, if you want to be able to see the H, like the middle part of the H and everything, you can move the you know, inner sentence down. It doesn't have to be split letter, like dead center all the time. You know, if you want to be able to, if you want to split it, you know, where they can, you can see some of the H there and Henderson goes across the middle. If you want to go across the top, if you want to go across the middle, that's totally up to you, right? Whatever you want to do. I'm going to undo this. Let me get back to, I could have just did my alignment here. Let me just do the alignment. Select those three, select that, and align to center. There we go. I'm just going to go center with it. Okay. Now, um, the I lost my overlap, that undo goofiness. Uh, let's come in here and overlap just that E on the bottom. Just that E on the bottom there. There we go. Now, here's what you do. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the uh, H and everything. We're going to use our boundary here, this outside boundary, to kind of connect to it and all. And uh, I'm going to offset this boundary outward, the outside rectangle outward, just literally about 10 or 20 thousandths of an inch, everybody. So 0 0.02. Um, and... Uh, Offset outward. And then I'm going to take my H. I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to select the boundary that I offset last. And I'm going to use the trim tool. And I'm going to clear inside that boundary. So what it's going to do, it's going to redraw that you know H around that boundary. And then I'm going to get rid of the boundary. Okay, so that just gives me kind of, uh, you know, that uh, spacing there. Now here, uh, my letters are the boundary. The text, the font is the boundary. So I'm going to select this rectangle first. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select the uh, letters, the text last, because that's the boundary and you always select the boundary last. And when I trim using the regular trim tool and I clear inside that boundary, it's going to redraw that rectangle around all the letters that it's overlapping and everything. And what's going to happen when it does that and everything, I can literally now remove the font. I'll actually just move it out of the way so you can see. And the letters now are there, but they're actually connected to that outside box. Do you see that? Can you see that? So it took that rectangle that I was overlapping all those letters and it took those lines. And since the letters were the boundary and I was clearing inside the boundary, in order to clear inside the boundary, it had to redraw those lines around the letters. And by doing that, it created an impression of the letters there um, inside that. It redrew that box and created the impression of the letters. So you don't need the font anymore. Um, now, the areas that are going to get cut out are the areas in here, these pockets and everything. It's going to be kind of a, you know, a, a recess cut, a pocket cut. 
um, and everything, but we're going to do it kind of as a V carve, you know, so they're raised. So these letters are kind of raised up and everything. Um, and uh, in order to do that, these all these areas are getting kind of pocketed out and stuff. So what that looks like is when we select this, V carve toolpath, and the reason why we're using the V carve toolpath is so that is so that. Uh, the letters, the nice sharp corners and everything, all these sharp corners and everything, the V that'll cut that. Uh, so V carve toolpath starting at zero. New tool, this is a brand new toolpath, nothing to do with that other project. Uh, and the depth, how deep I want the pocket, uh, I'm an, I like an eighth of an inch, so that's all I'm gonna go is an eighth of an inch. 0 0.125, 60 degree V bit. And it's gonna be carving between these lines, right? So I'm gonna use, a, I have a 16th inch end mill. And so I'm gonna use that 16th inch end mill to help do some of the flat work and clean out some of the uh, flat areas. And I can use a combination of my eighth and my 16th. So my V-bit just only has to deal with the edge. So I'm gonna, uh, on my end mills, um, let's hit close real quick. Uh, I'm gonna select use clearance tool and hit select here. And on my end mills, I'm going to choose my eighth inch bit. And I'm going to choose my sixteenth um, inch end mill. And I'm going to calculate that toolpath. Now what that's going to do is on here, um, it's going to carve and it's going to have that kind of raised up. Now I am going, so it's not so clear and blurry and all that stuff. Um, I am going to, uh, uh, what am I trying to say here? I am going to turn up the resolution just a little bit for this one, just this one time, just a little bit higher and uh, preview that. <clears throat> okay. So it's kind of, uh, you know, in that uh, pocket area there. Now, if you want, uh, if I came in here and um, wanted to carve opposite of that, where I wanted Anderson to carve down, then I would select both. So it's kind of like a reverse kind of thing. I would select both uh, these and this. Oh, I'm holding the wrong shift key, sorry, shift key. Uh, and if I did a V-carve toolpath on that same parameters and everything, um, the eighth inch won't fit at that point. But what that does is it carves the other way, right? And um, I don't want it carved this way. I don't want it kind of like, you know, stamped in there like that and everything. I want it the other way, but I also, I'll show you, we're going to do a little bit of a clearance around it too, so things get cleared up. So I don't want that one. I just wanted to show you what you would do if you selected the other one. So I want to delete that. Okay, so once again, coming back here, let's reset this and show you what this looks like. Okay, now, around here around the letters around the perimeter i want to remove a i want to remove a little bit of that material so it kind of creates a little bit of an opening uh it my letters are just they look a little bit raised uh and everything so on my uh rectangle here to keep everything kind of uniform um i'm going to offset this i'm just when i say offset i'm going to manually offset i'm going to drag this inward and uh, I'm holding the wrong shift key, thank you very much. And that's not gonna do it for me. So I don't wanna do that. Undo, I'm gonna use my offset tool and I'm gonna go inward on that um, a 16th of an inch, square corners. Let's go more, that's, that's not enough for me. Let's go, 
one eighth. That's too little. All right, uh, let's see. I got to find the happy medium. Let's go point oh eight. Okay, I'll be content with that. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, I need a second rectangle. And that rectangle has to be, oops, don't do that. That rectangle has to be right at the corner to corner on the letters. So that perimeter there. And we are going to run between these two rectangles right here. We're going to run a little pocket cut. And I'm going to go down just an eighth of an inch. And I'll use my, I think my eighth inch end mill will fit in there. No. All right, so I need my 16th inch end mill. Uh, let's go 16th. And I'm going to do it just in two passes, not four. And calculate. And what that's, hopefully what that's going to do is clear that out. Okay. Uh, it is, it's, I got to go over the line on this side. So I need to go an allowance. I need an allowance. So I need to go over the line 0.02. Negative 0 0.02. Negative 0 0.02. And what that should do let me come in here a little bit. Let me turn this. All right, 0 0.02 did not get me there yet. It did not get me there. No, it did. It did. It did its thing. I just don't like that look. Give me just a moment here. Oh, no. I'm looking at it from the wrong direction. Let me look at it from the straight on. Yeah, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's blurry on my side, so you'll have to forgive me. Yes, that's fine. I'm good with that. Okay, um, the... Uh, this line here of the H, keep on the wrong damn ship key. Um, I want. That to be a V-carved tool pass. Sorry, I had to think out loud, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're running over time and it's killing me. Um, eighth of an inch. I'm not going that deep with the H. It's going to 16th. This could also look good. Laser engraved to 0 0.0625. Um, I am going to use both, all three of these tools. I'm keeping it the same. Calculate. Okay, preview that visible toolpath. Okay, and then my final toolpath is going to be a profile cut on, it's going to be cutting um, a uh, point. Oh, eight inches deep. It's going to be using the 60 degree V bit. On the line, climb cut. Don't forget to change back to climb after that surfacing. Um, on the line, preview the visible tool path. Okay. So, 
the only thing that's going to throw me off is this V cut right here um, because of that border. Let me add the color to it and see here. Yeah, it's too thin of a line. I need that line to be thicker. So I need this to go, this to be a little bit bigger. Yeah. All right. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, let's, we're going to get rid of that. We'll leave that toolpath there because, but we got to offset this one more time. This is going to get offset outward. Let's go, um, a full eighth of an inch on that. Deleting the original. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lose that little detail, but that's okay. I, if I'm going to do that, offset inward a 16th. Sorry. This is what happens when you design on the fly. All right. If I'm going to do it this way, then then I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to connect the H there. 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 And there. This will make sense in just a moment. All right. So on that toolpath, it's not going to be a profile. That's going to get deleted. We should have our V carve. This toolpath here is actually going to now be this and this. Holding that shift key down. Calculate. Reset the preview. Preview the visible toolpath. And that should give me that box. Just like that my letters and this pocket cut should be in here preview the visible toolpath okay there we go all right so how many of y'all did i put to sleep on that one <laughs> All right, Chad Jones, quit laughing at me. I saw that smiley face. Uh, let's see. I made a couple of these wall mount bottle openers with 3D carvings, right? Uh, did with uh, uh, Manic Wood, Bear, and Moose model on them. They're really cool projects. There you go. That's awesome. Um, for sure. On this, uh, I'd like to go into node editing. And... I'd like to move this node. Oops, hold on. Before I do that, let me come down here. Right above the H, I'm going to insert a point there, and I'm going to insert a point over here. Now, I'm going to select this point first. This point second. doesn't matter what order I select, but I'm going to hit the letter Y on the keyboard just to make sure they are aligned with each other. So they're in alignment with one another. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag this to the right and I'm going to type in uh, one inch and I'm going to drag this one to the left and I'm going to type in one inch. I'm going to uh, take this line and make it a uh, 
Bezier curve. Let me see if it's going to be a Bezier curve. Are you going to be Bezier? Got to get it all to fit, so bear with me just a moment. Now, I'm going to select this node, and that anchor is going to get automatically selected. I'm going to hit letter Y there. This node, I'm going to uh, not do that. I'm not going to smooth that one. So leave that one. I'll just leave that one like it is. No big deal. Now, the thing that would probably be smart for me to do the quickest and smartest way for me would be to cut the vector here, cut it here, draw a line right down the middle. Doesn't have to be a long line. Select this, select the line and flip it about the line. Take my scissors and trim that away. Okay. Remembering now that this center part right here is this device, right? Okay. All right. So uh, the tool pass, I've got the front here tool pass. We have a uh, through hole. So pocket cut going all the way through the material, 0.75. Um, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. And then a profile cut. You got to join all of these. Now these, just because I you know, drew them a certain way and all. I remember I cut them over here to flip, so I got to rejoin it back into one closed vector. Uh, we're going to do a profile tool path. Um, as a matter of fact, I, don't, I do not need that pocket, ladies and gentlemen. This pocket here, that was an idiotic move. Uh, that's just exhaustion. I'm going to delete this uh, because I'm doing a profile cut. I'm just cutting that circle out with the quarter inch end mill. And it knows when I do a profile tool path here and I'm cutting through my material, Z equals or, you know, 0.75. And I'm using my quarter inch end mill. When I tell it to cut on the outside of the line, it will do that for this profile cut. But it knows there's an inside vector. So it will cut that first on the inside of the line. Then it will do the profile cut on the outside of the line. Make sure it's a climb cut, calculate, preview the visible tool path. Okay. Now again, remember there's a little uh, hangover here, you know, hookup. Now I'd like to have a little bit of an impression here. I'd like to have a little bit of a recess so it kind of really stands out. Because there's going to be a magnet there or a little box, a little catch-all basket we can mount down here. Whatever you want. I'll probably end up throwing a magnet right around in here somewhere uh, for this part for the mirror lids to kind of attract to on the back side. I'll magnetize this whole thing. But, um, but this, I'd like to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a recess. Um, for it. So what that means is, is this tool, these tool paths are going to have to get, uh, have a start depth. And what, I, and let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to go here, just in this area. Uh, I'm going to offset that rectangle inward, and I'm going to go inward um, a eighth of an inch. 
do I even have an eighth? Let me find out. 0.125. Inward. Square corners. I do. I do have an eighth of an inch. Good. That eighth of an inch, I'm going to do a little pocket cut. I just want a little bit of depth, a little bit of depth and definition. Hey, Stephanie, thank you for tonight. We're leaving here in about 10 minutes, so you have a wonderful evening. I won't be able to finish this last one. We'll have to do that next week um, for more holiday projects. But um, uh, thank you, Stephanie. The um, This recess here, just to give it a little definition, a little depth and definition and everything, and... Um, the whole thing uh, is going to look like this. Let's do this. I'm keeping everything in the middle the same, but I'm going to go with a V-carved toolpath. I'm going to select that and this and this. And I'm going to do a V-carved toolpath, and I'm going to go just, uh, I just want a little bit of depth, a little bit of definition. So um, I don't, I'm not going to go the full eighth. I'm going to go a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm going to calculate that toolpath. And what this is going to do for me is um, I'm going to reset the preview back to a blank board. But what this is going to do for me, this is going to give me kind of that raised uh, platform here. Let me turn off the color so you can see what's going on, right? So we have that kind of raised platform there and everything. And um, as of right now, uh, this centerpiece has, uh, is all missing and everything. I think I'm gonna go back into that toolpath and turn on Um, turn on let's see if it cuts skips cuts skips cuts hell hold on a second ladies and gentlemen let me see if I selected all what result do I get except for this one? Let me turn that off for a minute. So it's gonna cut between here, skip between here, cut between these two lines, skip between those two lines, and then cut between these two lines, uh, which is actually this vector right here. So, That's great. Calculate. Reset the preview. Preview the visible toolpath. There we go. Perfect. And when I add the color, Now, the question I ask myself is, is this too much down here? Should I just bring that up so it's even, so it's a square all the way across? Because I'm, I, I guess I'm OCD lately because it, it, things like that just drive me nuts. So let's go to measure this and let's see if I measured vertically from here to here, uh, that's 0.189. So from there to there is 0.189, okay. So then I'm going to take this, I'm going to go into node editing. I'm going to select these two nodes and I'm going to drag that line up and snap it to that point. Then I'm going to drag that line down. I'm going to select those two nodes again. This time don't go left to right. Uh, but I'm going to drag one of them down and they'll both go with me and I'm going to type in 0 0.189, 0 0.189. Okay. So now 
That way I could add in a little whatever down there. All right, so I'm gonna recalculate that toolpath. And I wanna preview this, 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 this. Reset, preview visible. Okay. All right, I'm good with that. The little hanger goes right there. The little bottle opener goes there. Now, side two, very quickly. Um, on the back side here, I want uh, to have a magnet catching. You know, it's going to be in here. So, um, you know, here's where that bottle opener is going to go. So somewhere in here, uh, I want to have a magnet. Now, I have... Um, those magnets are three millimeters thick. Uh, and I can go with a thicker magnet, right? But I don't, I don't, I need it. It's got to pull through the wood. Um, so I'm going to be putting a pocket on the back side, and the pocket's got to be deep enough that a magnet can get epoxied in. And, um, but there's still a thin skin of wood that, that, you know, uh, that the magnet can still pull through. So for that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to probably step up our game with the magnets let's see here uh rare earth i got my cap locks on but that's okay you guys know what i'm typing there all right, let's see what we got. We got our discs. So, um, let's see here. Strong neodymium. So neodymium will probably be better than rare earth. Um, 20 millimeters by three millimeters. 20 by three. So, um, And this is 0 0.08 inches thick. Three millimeters is 0.125. I'm trying to get the best bang for the buck. 25 piece, 20 millimeter. Are those neodymia or the, yeah, they're neodymia rare earth. Neodymium rare earth magnets. Um, heavy duty magnets. Rounded. Yeah. Hey, uh, who was it that said earlier that they made a couple of those? Roger S. Roger, did you use a magnet on the back side? Do you, do you remember what size they were? So 20... Twenty millimeters. So twenty times I for imperial conversion. So that's that's three quarter, a little over three quarters of an inch. I could do that. I could do two of them. One there. It goes through an eighth inch. Man, Chad Jones, thank you very much. No magnets. Okay, Chad Jones, thank you. That's great information. Quarter inch thick. So I need to be quarter or less on the thickness. Quarter or less on the thickness on that front side. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with, uh, honestly, I think I'm going to go with, One there. One there. 
All right, I'm gonna take those two vectors and copy to the other, or move, sorry, move to the other side. And now, keep this in mind, exactly what Chad Jones just said. Uh, it can pull through quarter inch thick material. So uh, I'm gonna go, you know, to be on the safe side, let's say we want 3 16 Now, if you remember this pocket cut right here, um, that is, let me go with solid view. This pocket cut right here that is uh, removing all that pocket, the depth of cut is um, a 16th of an inch deep, right? So that's all, from that material, that's a 16th of an inch down already, just basically a 16th of an inch down. So when I'm doing my math and everything for these uh, pocket cuts, and hell, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna just uh, make my, oversize my pockets just a little bit and everything, but, um, we're going to do a pocket toolpath. We're going to allow the allowance, we're going to allow it to go over the line by a uh, 30 second, 0 0.03125, just a little bit bigger. Now, nah, 30 seconds, too, that's too much. That's too big of a gap. Let's go uh, 10 thousandths. Uh, I'm trying to think. I gotta be able to push it down in there with the epoxy. It's gotta get all the way down in there. I wanna give myself some room. Uh, let's go 0 0.02 on the offset. Negative. Negative, always a negative when you're going over the line. 0 0.02. Uh, all right, let's do some math here. So my material's three quarters of an inch thick. Um, we're going to uh, deduct a 16th of an inch from that. Um, so the, uh, we're at 0 0.6875, 11, 16, and, um, we can pull through a quarter. So 11 sixteenths is, uh, that three quarters. I'm already down 0.628. Need to subtract a quarter from that. Uh, and I'm going to go 3 16 So minus 0.1875 from that, that leaves me with a half inch depth of cut. So if I cut down a half inch deep, and I'm already a 16th of an inch deep on the other side, that leaves me 3 16 of an inch of material in between, and the magnet should pull through that. Right? So uh, we're going to calculate that, and that point, that negative 0.02, is going to do just a bit of an overcut, just so those magnets can get down there, you can get epoxy around them and all that stuff. So uh, those will, um, you know, we'll have that cut there on the back for those magnets to go down into. Um, and uh, that will be that. Now, I, I only have, this is the last little, last little fine touch here, for me anyway. Um, on the other side, going back to side one, I only have horizontally from there to there, I got an eighth of an inch. My, if I wanted to round over my edges to kind of soften them up, I do not know what that will look like here. Um, so I may just kind of have to soften those edges uh, by hand. But what I'm going to do for kicks and giggles, I am going to run a tool path. Uh, a, 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 a round over tool path on it just to see. And uh, that way I, j j I know, as long as I know, I know. Uh, so it's gonna be 0.25 inches deep. Um, it's gonna be using the white side 2050 eighth inch round over bit, 2050. 
It's going to be on the outside of the line with an allowance of negative 0.125. Always the settings for that bit. And if I calculate that, and I preview that toolpath, Got to turn off the color for this one. All right, so right here on the sides here, that's okay. I'm not I'm not mad at it, but what I'm gonna actually do is I'm actually gonna just uh, do this. I'm gonna just give myself a little bit. Uh, bear with me. Let me get rid of this. I'm not mad at it. I'm just going to size this down just a little bit. Give myself a little bit of room. Hold the shift key down. Keep it centered. That's it. All right. I'm going to recalculate... those three tool paths right there. Recalculate the visible. Okay. And let's preview that again. So reset the preview. Preview the visible tool pass. There we go. All right. And all because I just all I wanted to do uh, was just give myself a little bit more meat here for that eighth inch round over. Right. So and it just softens up the edges. Remember, the hanger is going to be here. The hanger is going to be here. OK, the hanger is going to be here. Now, I will, uh, you know, whatever you want to do in the middle here is what you want to do, right? But I will make this profile available to you guys and girls well, as well. And remember, the links that I put in the chat, uh, they are referenced around this part, this 16-piece set of these uh, vintage uh, ball openers that kind of have like a brass patina to them. They go with their screws and everything um, and uh, uh, beer cap coat cap you know soda open yeah that kind of thing but um, that's that and remember the links I did post in the chat earlier scroll all the way up if you haven't used them or clicked on them already and remember just remember they are affiliate links and I might get a small commission on them all right ladies and gentlemen it's 1030 and um, we ran over uh, what I will do is, uh, next week I want to kind of, um, uh, or the next class I want to kind of continue this before, we, you know, these little ideas for holiday stocking stuffers and presents and last minute gifts and everything. And the last project, the, just so you know, what we did not cover tonight, I will cover first in the next project. Um, let me get to my... Um, give me just a moment. Uh, oh. Man, I hate I'm using the wrong keyboard. Uh, wood. All right, I've got a design in mind that's gonna kind of be like a, a, a bottle tote, right? Uh, and uh, I'm just pulling these up so you, for you visual folks that need to be visual, but those large uh, bottle openers, which is kind of the theme we were going, they can be mounted to the side of the tote, right? Uh, kind of thing. And uh, but we've got, I've got a nice decorative handle design and stuff that we're gonna do. Didn't quite get to the tote, tonight 
Uh, we've gone long enough. Sorry, my mind's mentally exhausted. But, um, uh, but we will, in the next class, we're going to continue with items. We're done with the bottle openers, right, and beer bottles. That was just something just for something fun. Uh, cool little uh, stocking stuffers and all, lots of different designs and profiles. I'll make all the profiles and tool paths. I'll clean it up, make everything all available to you. And the, the vectors as well, I'll make available to you uh, and stuff um, that uh, you can utilize. And they're all based around those parts and everything. Um, and uh, as far as the engravings on the other side, or if you wanted to do two rail sweep or ergonomic handles or whatever the case may be, I mean, you can you can let your creativity creativity kind of run wild with that. Um, your split style fonts, you could use the vector font as an example, and uh, you can do any letter that you wanted to, right? Um, the uh, but the tote will do first. That'll be the first thing. I'll have everything kind of pre-drawn out, but I'll just go over it with you and stuff. Because uh, I got a nice, I got a nice curved handle design and the way it joins together. I think that'll be pretty cool. And it just kind of goes with the theme. It's just something else to use with the big bottle opener, this guy here, um, and everything. Uh, just something fun. But hell, you can do all kinds of different designs and shapes and 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 neat things for wall hangers, right? And on the back side of this, we have a pocket cut. Um, that, uh, the two, I've, I'm using two magnets and I'll put the link for those magnets in there, but, uh, I'm using two magnets, 20 millimeter magnets, uh, by three millimeter, uh, in there to help catch the bottle caps. When you pop them, they'll fall and they'll get attracted right in here and everything and stuff. Um, should be okay to pull through three sixteenths of material. If not, we just go a little bit deeper. Right, we can go deeper if we need to with our pocket holes for those magnets and all. Um, the uh, we can have some fun with that. So let me bear with me just one second. Uh, those these magnets right here. Those are the twenty millimeters. Um, the link. For them I'll throw up in the chat those are those 20 millimeters by 3 millimeters and everything and um, the uh, last thing I want to say this is how I want to close out ladies and gentlemen is I want to thank my uh, paid valued members uh, my silver and gold members uh, that have joined um, the, uh, uh, the members club of Spindle TV's YouTube channel. Uh, and, uh, for those of you that are not sure what I'm talking about, um, there's a join button on our channel now. Uh, and the, on youtube.com. Spindle TV. Should be at Spindle TV, but that's okay. It's here. There's a join button there now, and uh, you can join to uh, get exclusive perks and things. Uh, some of the perks uh, you would uh, have access to. We're going to mute that and pause that, but um, uh, we have uh, discounts off of builditv.com, any merchandise or items that are sold over there. Uh, we have private classes just for members only that will not be open to the public uh, every Wednesday night at 7.30. And for those paid members that are still in the group and everything, we're doing the Wavy Flag Project to start off with. And uh, But members can paid members can submit their projects that they want help worked on and all of the other members and all will collaborate. Gold members can come on live on screen with me uh, and everything during the class. And... Um, uh, they get uh, any live content or any non-live content that I put out. Paid members get to see it 24 hours in advance before the public does uh, in things. And there's other perks. Gold members get 50% off on you know products that I sell at Build It TV and everything. But there's two categories. But there's a little video there when you click the join button that will kind of explain a little bit. And uh, so what I'd like to do... 
uh, to end tonight is I'd like to take just a quick moment and uh, give uh, my paid members a shout out. So uh, Jim Matthews, thank you very much. Uh, Dave Garbett, uh, Hiram Alvarado the third, Kurt H, uh, Manish Patel, Robert White Cotton. Uh, thanks, Bob. I appreciate you. Uh, Daryl uh, Pakok, um, and for you paid members, if I butcher your name, you gotta let me know in the private group that I did. Leah Dillard, R.L. Uh, Bishop, R.L. Bishop, sorry. Uh, Bob Hutchinson, uh, Kevin Wild, David Lowell, Charles Roby, uh, Charles Hall, John Thompson, Doug, the Daw, Doug, uh, Chad Jones. Thank you, Chad, and thanks for the help on the magnets. Uh, David Heineke. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Keith Kessler, um, Rob, Rob Sandstrom. Thank you. Uh, Levi Mitchell. Alan Lee, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid's in the group. Yeah, Kool-Aid, thanks, man, I appreciate you. Uh, Rod Walling, Rod Walling's in the group. Uh, Stephanie had to leave us early, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, and um, Roger Smith, Roger Brown, David Krause, Doug Fushi, and Roger Bakak, Bakak? I'm gonna say B-A-C-A-K, Bakak. Back. Give me, Roger, uh, if you're in the group or, or anything, let me know. Uh, uh, but I'm going to call it, I'm going to say Roger Bacock and then uh, correct me in the group and I'll make sure I don't do that again in the future. But um, we are 30 strong now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to say this. We have over, almost 10,000 subscribers uh, and of you 10,000 that are subscribed to the channel. Uh, if any of you and all of you would like to have some extra perks and everything or some behind the scenes stuff, be able to talk with me on a daily basis or be able to have video chats with me one on one for help and support and things like that. Think about joining uh, for a small fee, $9.99 a month for silver members, $19.99 a month for gold. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. We will finish that tote. We'll do that tote first thing in the next class. I'll make the announcement when that's going to be. And, um, and then we'll have some other cool stuff, uh, some other ideas and everything. But I hope you got something out of tonight's class. I'll make all the vectors available to you and everything after I get everything cleaned up nicely for you. I'll put together a little package and it'll be available for download in the description of the video. Give me till, uh, you know, give me a day, 24 hours or so, and I'll have it in there. And um, give me some thumbs up if you liked it. And if you learned anything, have a nice evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for my paid members. Thanks again for everybody for watching. I uh, appreciate you all. See you.